Hey, great friends, for those of you that are watching, I want you to look right up here. I want you to look up my nose. For those of you that are listening, you're not going to be able to do this. And for those of you that are watching, you're not going to want to do this. But I just want to say one thing. Um, I have got hairy nostrils. I admit it. Okay, I admit it. What do you want me to do, Browner? Are you making looks at me? You're making faces at me. Yeah, listen, man, you up at that age, man. You had to, you had to, you know, the doctor went in the back door, other doctor went in the front door. And now you got your nose, your nose taking your ear, hair taking over your nose. How about your ears? Your ears hairy too? Yes. So yes, ears oh. get, get a little hairy. Nose gets very hairy. And then if you ever try and pull nose hairs out, they bleed like a motherfucker and they hurt Ugh. bad. Oh, I'm not there get, yet. I'm not there. Do what? They? They? No, they yeah, bleed. If, Dude, if you've ever pulled like a whole bunch of hairs out of your nose, yeah. and like, like it could be bloody, it could be gross. Eh. All right, why Listen, I, as why someone, as someone, as someone, as someone who has a, a crap ton of nose hair themselves, never have dealt with bloody nose from pulling nose hairs, and I yeah. pull a solid five to ten nose hairs a day. Listen, really? That might yeah. that might have been your uh, your your younger activities coming back to haunt you. <laughs> who me? Yeah, you did drop a little. Uh, a little something last night during the show, and we just totally <laughs> glossed over it. <laughs> you know, like yeah. cocaine's overrated or something like that. No, I mean, I just was like, I'm not into it. I've never been into it. I never, I was never into it, you know? Anyway, listen, here's my point in this whole no hair conversation. <laughs> my whole point is, is that Manscaped is a great product and that you should buy. <laughs> and when you buy it, you should be using our promo code, which is, um, which is great friends. Here's why I tell you all of this. I tell you all of this because Manscaped is a company that's right here in San Diego County in Carlsbad. They were a complete pain in my ass to get a hold of. I finally got a hold of these guys. We've got a great thing going with them right now. When you buy Manscaped products, whether it's the ball deodorant or it's the lawnmower machine, that's my point about the nose hairs. See, now I got these nose hairs out. They're clean. Yeah, my balls are clean. My freaking balls over here. I mean, listen, if you guys, if you go out and you get with a girl and you expect cleanliness, she expects cleanliness. Manscaped that shit, okay? Here's the point. Um, when you buy Manscaped products, you use our promo code, great friends, you save 20%. This is great for the show. The more you buy, the better we do. We're all happy, right? They're happy they're selling products. You're happy you're getting products. We're happy we're helping everybody. Manscaped, use the promo code, great friends. Great friends on a Wednesday afternoon. What's happening, everybody? Scott Kaplan and crew taken to the stream. We're live on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, get involved in our YouTube chat right over here. Okay, all you YouTubers, as you're just getting in, happy to see everybody today. If you're on Facebook, I encourage you, I implore you, click the share button, start a watch party, Get all your people all over the country watching the show, sharing the show, building the show. So if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, you know what to do. If you're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, any of the audio podcast platforms, yo, what's up? And if you are listening on 1090 today, let me tell you something. If you're listening on the radio today, you got to love sports last night unless you're just a Padre fan. In other words, if you are a sports fan, last night was awesome. I had my girlfriend who, when, when she and her ex-husband got divorced, little did I know, of course, because I didn't even really know her at the time, that I was going to enjoy and be the beneficiary of the tremendous remodel that they did in their home back then. They what a dick great. thing to say. What? Dude, what they, wow. To say. Dude, they, got, they remodeled their house. She got the house. I practically live there and she did such a great thing in her house. She put up a beautiful TV in her family room and then right next door is the kitchen and she put another TV above the oven. So I had the Laker game on the kitchen TV and I had the Padres Dodgers game on the family room TV and I sat at her kitchen table, which centered right in between. So I was able to watch one, one game on the big TV, one game on the smaller TV, but I had both games going simultaneously 
thanks to my current, my girlfriend. And again, like I said, this is what she did before she got divorced and her ex-husband. So I love it anyway. Um, yeah, I guess it is kind of a dick thing to say. Let me say hola, kind of, mm. hola, hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro. He's representing the 805 Oxnard, California in the house. Yeah, he was watching Dodgers Padres last night, but he mm -hmm. was recording his Lakers podcast last night, Talk O Tuesday for silverscreenandroll.com. Yep. And he's rocking his Laker hoodie today. Mm -hmm. Rondé, good afternoon. Um, listen, people, I don't do victory laps on this show, but if you listen to me, you know that when I say things, it happens. And literally everything I said yesterday that would happen, happened. And the Padres lost, like I said they would. The Lakers played nowhere near as bad as they did, and Jimmy Butler was nowhere near as good as he was ever going to be again, and the Lakers win relatively easy. Listen, listen to me, and you'll know what's going to happen tonight in the night of sports, okay? That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. No victory lap, just a very, very gentle, humble brag. Okay, I like it. I like it. Opening thoughts from Grande Alejandro. By the way, you say that I'm a dick for saying on air that my girlfriend it, who, it came off dickish. I don't mean it to be dickish. I mean it to I be know, like I know. But it's but it's it's the thing is is that you know I look at my girlfriend and I'm like, how did her how did they ever get divorced? Like I I I like I like follow her around like a little puppy. You know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like listen, I'm hey, listen, man. Well, if you live at the dump long enough, it's all bad. Well, I'm not living at the dump, I guess. I've I've moved out of the dump. What do you think about that, Browner? I just I if you understand the metaphor, one man's trash is the next man's treasure, sometimes you feel like you live at the dump. So it's all trash. So all right. You, yeah. All right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, say good afternoon to this man right here. You know him, you love him. Well, some of you do. Six foot seven inches. 135 pounds. If you're still here, you still love him. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for damn sure. 135 pounds, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, street cred, south side of Chicago representing Big Brown himself, John Brown. Hey, hey, America, listen, I saw two things last night. I'm a victory lapper. You know why? Because I celebrate hard work as you should too. Don't be like Alex. Don't pimp, don't, don't not pimp your home runs. You hit one out of the park. You dance on your way to first base, okay? You score a touchdown. You bring your teammates in and you do the electric slide if you need to. Don't listen to him, okay? Celebrate your <laughs> victories. Smell your roses while you can still smell them while you're above ground. You feel me? So with that said, <laughs> it's funny how he wants to not take the victory lap and talk about how he predicted Everything would happen for the Lakers, but yet he missed the most important portion about what happened last night. AD for finals MVP. Okay. If you saw Anthony Davis's defense last night on Jimmy Butler, completely took him out of the game. He made three shots from the second quarter to the end of the quarter to the, to the end of the game. That's because of AD. Yeah, the Padres lost. We got plenty of time to talk about that, but I just want to make one thing clear. AD for MVP, for people who actually know basketball. To that, I throw it back to you, Scott. Well, well, I thank you. Thank you so much. And back John to Browner. you, Scott, here from yeah. the studio. Back to you, Scott Kaplan. Yeah. Thank you very much for that back to you. That was so professional sounding. Yeah. Wow, that was really cool. Reporting live so, in front of the Victory Lap Hotel. Back to you, Scott Kaplan. Quarantine I like free. I like it. Hey, listen, let me tell you. Let me start off with this because um, I think that the biggest story – for people who are tuning in, particularly um, in San Diego, who've been longtime great friends, the thing you're probably thinking about right now is the Padres and the loss last night to the Dodgers. I thought that the Dodgers would win this game, even though I'm rooting like crazy for the Padres to win this series. Now, hold on. Before I, before I go on, for those of you watching, put that picture back up, please, Alex, if you don't mind. As Mike Clevenger is being walked off the mound, and this is the mistake of the entire series. If the Padres don't win the series, we're going to look back to the choice and the decision of starting Clevenger. But I got a lot of people on Twitter last night that were showing me that picture, and they were showing me the trainer of the Padres walking off the field with him, and they were saying, dude, are you on the field at the ballpark in Arlington? Because people thought that this trainer right here looked like me. Really? 
I didn't see it. Hell no. I didn't see it. I mean, he's a nice looking, I, clean cut guy, but he's not. Gotta, come on. Who's the come trainer? On. I'll pull up an actual picture of him. I don't know who the guy is. I don't oh, know. Who that. Yeah, I don't know who that is right there. But let me just say this. The the Padres last night, I thought that this game would be lost for this reason. When the Padres hosted the Dodgers in the final series um, between the two teams at Petco Park, you'd have to tell me the exact date. But if you remember what happened in that series, the Dodgers had come in kind of struggling and the Padres won that first game. And, and I say struggling because the Dodgers didn't struggle much during the year, but there were a couple of periods of time, about four or five games. The Padres won that first game of that series. Do you guys remember the euphoria around San Diego as the Padres had closed the gap to one and a half games that night? Do you guys remember that? Yes. yes. If you read or listened um, or watched any of the Dodger post game from then, and if you watched any of the pre-series stuff before game one, the one thing the Dodger players seemed to think was that they got punched in the mouth that night by the Padres. They saw how the Padres were going to keep on coming at them. They definitely felt like they needed to reestablish who's the boss in games two and three, which frankly the Dodgers went on to do. So I, I felt like the Dodgers were going into game one of this series saying, we got to win this one. We can't let these guys build off the momentum that they had against St. Louis. We got to win this game. So I, I, I felt like the Dodgers were very focused on winning this game. That's why I picked the Dodgers to win. But uh, where the Padres now, it would seem, have major problems is the fact that Clevenger couldn't make it into the second inning. I talked about this yesterday. Clevenger needed to go five innings, needed to have a quality start, needed to leave the game in a really close game um, or with a nice lead. But that's what you needed from him. And that's what you were hoping to get. But pitching on the side and long toss, that is not game simulation. You just can't simulate the energy you're going to have and the effort that you're going to give. And this guy's arm was blown out in the second inning. And listen, I guess it's hindsight now. But if you really would have looked at it, I would have thought to myself, give him a couple more days. Let's get him to Wednesday or Thursday. Let's not start him in game one. But of course, the thought process for the Padres was, let's put our best guy out there in game one. Let's, let's establish a victory. I think where the biggest mistake was made last night was when the Padres bring in this young kid, Weathers. What a story, by the way. What a story. To be 20 years old, and make your major league debut against the Dodgers in the National League Divisional Series. What a story. And by the way, we've been talking all year. Fernando Tatis is only 21. Tyler Hero from, from the, the Heat is 20 years old. I'm looking at my son going, you're 20. You graduated high school the same year these guys did. It's hard to believe that a 20-year-old child can walk into a major league baseball game and make his debut as a major leaguer in this pressure packed situation. But the thing is the kid was on fire. I, I, I mean, I got to say, you know, if you're picking apart managing Jace Tingler last night, my opinion, this kid was hot. Let him roll. I don't know what they were thinking by taking this kid out. Nonetheless, Tingler eventually gets tossed from the game, which was another Bye -bye. bad piece of, that was bad, man. I mean, listen, you got to know, and don't tell me about firing up your squad. You do that in the middle of the season. You don't do that in the postseason. So the whole game was lost last night. I think as soon as Clevenger was, was out, even though the Dodgers had no hits through like five innings, but the use of the bullpen last night and the, the lack of pitching, if anybody's ever coached their kids in Little League, it's no different. I swear to you, it's no different. You get to the postseason in Little League, and you've got a certain number of kids that can pitch a certain number of innings. And once you use up your pitchers, you're screwed. And I can see Padre fans on Twitter saying, oh, no, we're screwed because we used up too much pitching in just game one. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that the Padres will be able to come back. I'm hopeful that they'll get a, a couple of solid starting performances, whoever winds up pitching. Uh, but I'm, I'm, uh, I was, uh, I was, I gotta say, 
I thought last night the biggest mistake was this kid Weathers was on fire. He was feeling the energy, and they took him out too soon. I don't know, man. I'm rambling at this point. Grande, jump People in. People like here. to point fingers at like specific moments in games, which I totally understand. Like the Eric Hosmer error was brutal at a terrible time. But I'll just say this, and this is a general statement that I, I feel comfortable saying every single game this series. <laughs> if the Padres get three hits, one runs, and strike out 14 times every game, they're going to get swept. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. And I get it that we're all going to panic about pitching, but – I, I say it again, this team is about offense, and if they're not going to score, they're not going to win any games because we know that it's Davies tonight who you're hoping, praying that he goes at least five innings. They need it. They desperately need it. And then you probably have to go Paddock tomorrow, and who knows what that comes, and then you probably got to go bullpen the rest of the way. So if you only get three hits and you worked Bueller really well, you got him out, You took, and then you got to deal with, with May who's freaking like – they're kryptonite for some reason. Like that kid just dominates the Dodgers. I mean the Padres. You got to do more offensively. And we saw it in game one. They struggled in game one to get some runs. They had their opportunities against the Cardinals as well. So we've seen them turn it around. And it really just takes like one guy to get this team going. And when this team gets going, it's almost impossible to stop them. But I mean, dude, that's, that's not good enough. And especially against the Dodgers, you're going to need more. And going forward, you can't walk nine guys. That's just like, come on. Like that I get that they weren't sharp yesterday, but there is many places to point fingers. Everything that that you thought could go wrong was gonna go wrong. I predicted a loss, but I didn't predict the lack of offense, the amount of walks that they give up, the wild pitches, the errors. Uh that was unforeseen. So I hope well, for me it was unforeseen. So I hope that they can clean that stuff up. And then tonight against Kershaw, who has pitched once in the in the playoffs so far, he struck out 13 guys. You gotta get to him. You got to demoralize this guy. You got to demoralize the team. Put it in their head that, that damn, you know, Kershaw is not so good in the playoffs. Like, if you can get that in their head, I think you can make some noise. But what they did last night, everything they did last night, they got to do the opposite today. Offensively, yeah. defensively, pitching, managing, everything has got to change for today. Yeah, and, you know, I'm glad you called the error on Hosmer because, um, you know, people were saying, oh, I, I said right away on Twitter, that's all on Hosmer, all of it. Did the ball hit him in the glove? And the ball hit him right in the glove. It, it's like a wide receiver who takes his eye off the ball at the very, very last second. Was it a perfect throw? No, it was not. Did it hit him in the glove? Yes, it did. He has to make that play. Got to make that play. And for a guy of Eric Hosmer's experience who's played in 30-plus postseason games and who's been a World Series champ, uh, in that situation, it's that's a routine play. That is not a terribly difficult play. Even if you caught the make, ball, his his foot wasn't on the bag. I know the, the whole thing, the whole play is on Hosmer. Browner, what'd you think last night, man? I mean, I'm not sure how you were dividing your time between basketball and baseball. Two TVs. Um, I, I will tell you this. If you are the San Diego Padres, I watched every pitch of that game simultaneously while also watching the Lakers game. What you realize is that you can actually watch baseball and basketball at the same time because you just got to listen for hits and when the <laughs> ball hits the mitt and baseball, yeah, and you can bad. actually just watch the basketball game. The mm -hmm. If you're the Padres, you walked up that field yesterday thinking you lost that game. They didn't beat you. You lost that game. You had the bases loaded with one out. That was a chance for you to pile on because what we do know about the Dodgers is if they get behind in a postseason situation, we've seen them grip and choke. So if you walked off that field in a Padres uniform yesterday, you're coming back today extra confident because your recipe of rolling out a pitcher every inning was working until Strom came in and just wet the bed. So outside of that guy who you probably shouldn't see again, and I'm with you, Weathers played a great game. You should have started that kid, or you should have put him in the second inning and see how far he could have went, basically treated it like a start that started in the second inning. I don't have a problem with the way they lost yesterday. They made some errors. They looked like a team that was in a big spot that needed to adjust. It was a fight. You took a punch, and now let's see how they respond today and punch back. I don't think today is going to be good because you're facing one of the greatest pitchers of all time. So but today it may not be going to your happened favorite, to you could have a chance. <laughs> what happened to Kurt Choke? What happened to Kurt yeah. Choke? You've been talking about how – Kershaw chokes. That's what he does, and now like he's the greatest pitcher of all time. What the hell? Don't lose faith now. This is the this is their chance, dude. I'm not losing faith at all. I have zero faith lost, but I am also a realist. 
I'm optimistic, but I can also see things for what they are. I thought yesterday they could have beaten Walker Bueller. And as the game started to progress, it looked like they were going to beat him. They they scratched out a run against him. They had the bases loaded against him. They had key hitters up to bat. Those guys struck out. I'm panicked so, now, Scott. Oh, listen. I'm panicked now be panicked. because Browner just flipped the switch on Kirchhoff. I know. I'm so know. panicked me, all of a sudden, dude. What the yeah. hell, JB? No, Let me I, ask you a question. I, I just want to know what Vegas says about today's game. Go ahead, JB. Just, Alex, if you can, look it up. Tell us what Vegas says about today's game. Like, what's the line in today's game? If you're the Padres, what I would what I would stress is go to the mound today, go to the diamond today, feeling as confident as you did yesterday because you had your chances. They didn't blow you out. You know hit them with just random dudes just running up to the plate. So if I were them, I would be very enthusiastic about our game plan. If you're that umpire, by the way, let me get to that because I know we, we don't got a little bit of time left in the segment. That guy's a clown. You're in a postseason game, okay? Uh-huh, you're going to run a guy for what? What did he say that was so bad? I've seen way worse be called. You know why he got yeah. thrown out? Because they don't like respect you, Tingler. They don't yeah, respect like you. Yesterday, oh. in the late, yesterday in that Laker game, LeBron and everybody, basically every Laker was crying all night about fouls, and who's the one that gets the tee? Caruso. It's just the way right. it works. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They uh, the thrown mo- out the- Dusty Baker. They wouldn't have uh, thrown out Dave Roberts for doing that. You you're not you're not throwing out Joe Girardi for doing that. They threw out Tingler because he's a no name. Yeah, well, he's out there cursing, you know, at the umpire, f bomb, f bomb, f bomb, and I guess the umpire's a very sensitive guy. What can I tell you? I mean, I didn't even understand what he was really arguing about. I was like, what what is going on here? Well, the umpire sucked. The, the low I understand. But he sucked game. both ways. He sucked both. He ways. was yeah. terrible. The low right, so game think, was think, terrible think, all night. If you think it was bad yesterday, just wait till tonight with Angel Hernandez behind the plate. Oh, He's boy. the notoriously one of the worst umpires in the league. What what is the uh, line in tonight's game? Dodgers by one and a half. What does that mean? One and a half runs. Favored by <laughs> oh. one and a half runs. Oh. Minus one ninety eight. Oh, oh, there, there we, we go. go again with the numbers. Yeah, um, I would tell you guys this. Uh, I if if you told me you had to bet on this game tonight, who would you bet on? Me? Yeah, I've been on the Dodgers. Alex? Well, I was all in on the Padres until Browner started saying, now all of a sudden, Kershaw's greatest of all time instead of the choker that he is in the playoffs. So, But me personally, I think Davies gives you your best chance. If you don't win tonight, you're you're screwed, personally. Here, here's so the I, thing. I would bet on the Padres tonight because their backs are against the wall. Yeah, see, tonight, here, here's, here's my thought on this. This is where I think the Padres are in big trouble. I feel like Kershaw, who's had all this postseason uh, – choke uh you know uh, perception i think people that's how they they look at him i think kershaw doesn't respect the padres i think yep. kershaw is pissed about the uh, the grand kershaw. slam and the and the and the taunt and i think you know we may see kershaw come out with his best and if it, and he comes out with his best it, it'll be 13 14 strikeouts through six innings you i was going to say he normally waits till till the bigger stage but he did do this against the nationals last year so it's possible Look, it, right. the Padres well, are going to have to score in the last three innings of this game to win. They're going to have to All score right, that in general. Thought. Yeah, hold that thought. Hold on. Stick around. We're just getting rolling. You can tell what's on our mind. It's Wednesday afternoon on Kaplan Crew. we got a great show coming up. Great friends on a Wednesday afternoon. If you're just getting with us, whether you're listening on 1090 on the radio or if you are watching on YouTube and Facebook, or you're listening on any of the audio podcast platforms, if you're just getting with us today, we've started off where you might expect, right? The Padres and the Dodgers, the LA victory last night, having to face Clayton Kershaw today, uh, Davies pitching for the Padres, the Padres pitching staff, just because of the amount of pitchers that they had to use last night, and, uh, and the fact that Clevenger didn't last but an inning, uh, already massive stress on the Padre bullpen in a five-game, potential five-game series, not just finishing something off in a three-game series. So that's where we began this yeah. afternoon with crew Grande By the way, and Big Brown. Um, yeah. I know that we're like, went all negative that first segment because why wouldn't you? But hey, you only gave up four hits to the Dodgers yourself. And with a very unexpected bullpen day, oh, maybe not unexpected, but a very much so a bullpen game. So your bullpen, besides the walks and putting themselves in terrible situations, you only gave up four hits against that that lineup. That is a positive to hopefully 
they can, they can improve on the walks and keep that hits low. That'll be big help. And also, Scott, you very much look like the head trainer of the Padres. Uh-oh. I just right, looked, hold on a second. I just looked him up last segment. Okay. We brought mm-hmm. it up. This picture, if you're watching, of Clevenger walking off the mound. I guess people started tweeting at you. Is that what? Is yeah, that what pe- people were tweeting at me, and they're like, "Yo, Kaplan, are you in Arlington? Is that you all masked out and walking Clevenger off the field?" Now, I want to just say one thing: that clearly cannot be me, because I just had my hair dyed. Yeah, it's very not, dark. Not long ago. Very, very dark. And for those of you that are watching, you can see there's no gray to be seen here. Now, see, now that guy, that guy looks a little grayish. Show me a, show me a, show me a, a real picture. So I cannot confirm if this is the same gentleman, but I looked up head trainer and it was Mark Rogal, Rogal or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, this is him a, a couple of years ago before the gray really sit in, as mm-hmm. my computer is not connecting. Hold on one second, because okay, you look like him. Whoa! I do. <laughs> That is you. Yeah. I don't see it. Yeah. Why do you keep hurting the pictures, dude? What are you doing? What do you mean? Every, Me, I'm hurting like the pictures? He's hurt as he's walking off. Cleverage mm. was hurt last night well, as he's walking off. If the head trainer is making an appearance on the mound, it's because he's because someone's hurt. Great, yeah. Scott. Way to go. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll tell you right now, listen, you can um, – y- y- this Clevenger start last night, and we'll look back. Like, if the Padres – Don't move on. If they don't advance from here and we're all going to start trying to make our excuses as to why that is, we'll hang our hats on. Clevenger was hurt. Dude. And and then they look like this guy. Wait a second. Wait a second. Now this, now you're showing me another picture of this guy. I just saw this one. This is just, this is you. You think that guy looks like me? I got, yes. The forehead is a little more square than yours. Uh, I got, I have to blow this up somehow. Hold on. Because this guy looks like you, man. You guys are twins. You take off the forehead. Bros. All right. Bros. Let me see this guy. I don't see it. Turn your head to the right. Smile. Oh, dude. Yeah, twins. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that are listening, you're like, shut up. <laughs> what are you guys doing? And then for those of you guys watching, you're like us. You're like laughing at us. <laughs> yeah, but keep going on, on what you're saying because I, I, I find it surprising. Maybe your expectations were a lot different. Maybe my expectations were a lot different. And right in the middle of that statement, we got the the uh, the breakup. What were you saying, Alex? My expectations were a lot yeah. lower than yours, it seems like, because I told my buddies, I was like, if Clevenger gives us three, that is a huge win. If he goes mm-hmm. five, I got wood. Like that, mm-hmm. honestly, like that. No, I was nowhere near expecting five. So you were expecting full on, full start. Well, I was saying, and by the way, I'm glad that that five would have given you wood. Yeah. I didn't realize that, that you were that total excited tea. Total tea. about oh. this. I didn't know. You know, speaking of Total T, let me have a second here to mention Total T. Total T Clinic. You know, Burke Grossman's coming up today. And Burke Grossman, um, he, he went with me to the Total T Clinic a couple of weeks ago, found out that his testosterone levels were insanely low. I could have predicted that. And um, he said his his levels were so low that they they told him he should get a C section. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what it means, but it sounded kind of funny. So Bert now is completely on the testosterone now, and the reason is is because if you feel flabby, if you feel wimpy, if you feel tired, if you feel like you're not getting it done in the bedroom, guys, then it's probably your testosterone levels. They're low when you get your your levels treated or when you get your levels tested at total T clinic, it takes like 15 minutes. Um, when you find out your levels are low, if they are, and you start on a, on a treatment with testosterone, you get those levels back up, dude, you're going to feel like you, you felt when you were a young guy, you know, you're going to feel strong. You're going to get back into the gym. You're going to, you're going to do your work in the bedroom. You're going to, you're going to feel great. So total T clinic, total T clinic.com and Burke Grossman, I'm sure we'll say more later on this afternoon. Where were we? Expectations of Clevenger, how you thought, this, this is going to be the line if we remember. If the Padres lose this series, it's because they started Clevenger game one. That well, was your well, general he, statement? He, here's why. Because we'll look back and we'll say, listen, we lost Clevenger and we lost Lamette. Mm-hmm. And people are going to go, well, you didn't lose Clevenger. He actually started game one. Right. He started game one and he gave you an inning. That's what he had. That's all Clevenger had in him. Listen, let me say this about Clevenger. I give the guy a ton of credit. He has been hurt for a month and he has gone out there at least twice knowing he could do much greater damage to his body 
for an organization that he just arrived at. He just got here. You know, he's not a lifelong Padre. He didn't come up through the system. He's not loyal to the franchise. They haven't made him wealthy. I mean, he just got here. And so what I think is cool about Clevenger is that he was willing to put out the risk for not the Padre franchise necessarily, for the guys in the clubhouse. Hey, we got a shot. We're here. We got a chance against the Dodgers. Let me give it my best. So the guy does everything you're supposed to do. He ices, he heats, he gets stretched, he does therapy, he throws in the outfield. He does everything you're supposed to do, theoretically, to get yourself healthy enough to get on the mound. But guess what? He's not healthy enough. He's not healthy enough. And he probably knew it in his own head. And they were probably just hopeful that he could get through some innings. And he couldn't. And, you know, listen, it, it's not like he left and the Dodgers blew it wide open. It took five innings until the Dodgers finally got themselves a hit, you know, till they finally manufactured a run. But when you look at the stats at the end of this game and you see the number of walks that the Padres issued, you see the number of strikeouts the Padres had, um, you know, listen, it didn't work on either side, pitching or hitting last night. It's like you've been saying at times, Alex, when the Lakers lost, they can't play worse. The Padres, they probably can't play much worse than last night because errors in the field, uh, wild pitches, issuing walks, striking out, opportunities for, for the superhero known as Slam Diego to show up. Every time the bases are loaded, we're all sitting there going, Waiting. here comes Slam Diego. Waiting. Yeah, it's Slam Diego. Like, like who's up and who's got a cape on and who is going to be the superhero this time? And it, it just didn't work out that way last night. Where I'm concerned is twofold. One, I I feel like Kershaw is bound to have one postseason before it's all done where he actually is as great as he's been in his career. 13 strikeouts last time out against the Brewers. I would bet you that Kershaw can't wait for his shot today against the Padres, given what happened last time he was on the hill here in Petco Park. And Grisham hit that home run and then kind of gave him the stare down. And Kershaw, after the game, was like, hey, you got anything to say about that? And he's like, yeah, who's that guy? Who is he? Do I know him? Mm -hmm. And then Dave Roberts was like, um, pretty freaking disrespectful to do that to Clayton Kershaw, given his accomplishments. Grisham better hit leadoff today. I just think here's, here's think my biggest concern now, is that you got Kershaw, who if he's Kershaw, Padres are in trouble. If he's Kershaw in the playoffs, Padres got to wake these bats up, but where I'm most concerned is the taxing already on the bullpen. Tatis needs to hit leadoff. Grisham, after was over, I think they said over 14 up until last night when he got a hit late in the game. I, I think you've got to start this game off with firepower. Again, I think Kershaw's going to be fantastic tonight, but I don't think he's going to go nine innings. So by the seventh God, eight, nine innings, I think that's when they're going to score. That's when they're going to have to be active. And so you're going to have to get to tease as many at bats, as many cracks at this as you possibly can. And I think they should hit him at leadoff. But again, I'm confident if I'm the Padres, I'm not worried about what we saw last night because I think the Padres lost that game. I didn't think the Dodgers won it. I didn't think they didn't dominate the game. I think the Padres just didn't make hits in key situations. Uh, just this just in from Magic Johnson, a very insightful tweet. He got uh, eight. Dodger, Dodger Nation. <laughs> What a dominant <laughs> performance by Austin Bueller and all of our relievers. Who Clutch hits for? by Mookie Betts and Justin Turner sealed the Dodgers' five to one victory. Did he call him Austin? Austin Bueller. Hmm. Whoever is texting or tweeting for Magic, y'all got to like double check him there, man. Come on, come on now. I mean, Walker Bueller did everything that you'd hope Austin. Mike Clevenger could have done. Austin Bueller, we'll call him now. Bueller, who's been dealing with this problem with a blister on his finger, on his pitching hand, has been trying to get this thing worked out for literally like the last six weeks and hadn't been able to go. And when he was able to go, he was, you know, this is it. This is what you get. You get four innings out of the guy. And then it's like, dude, my blister hurts. I got to get off the field. Smart strategy it, by him, though, because his finger is so messed up with there's so much pain in that blister it's like what else can i do to get this pain out of my finger let me wear the tightest pants possible and squeeze my nuts off so i can focus on that pain and not the one on my throwing hand because those are the tightest freaking pants worn by anybody in baseball like it was distracting 
It was too tight. Really? Yes. You, you were, you were, Whoa. you were, you found yourself Whoa. staring at, looking at his, staring at his, his crotch, at his rear and his crotch and his thighs. That's, really? Uh, was he, was, how was much, I mean, was he wearing a, a, an extra large cup? Like, like if, if he was, if I'm not sure if he if was wearing Bueller, one. Okay. If you were was wearing a cup, would he wear like mine, which would be considered the small, uh -huh. yours, Alex, which would be considered the medium, okay. or Browner's, which would be considered like the triple XL? Yeah, mine's come with a shoulder strap. <laughs> yours comes with a shoulder strap? Yeah. You know, like they carry those babies and those things that come across. <laughs> baby Bjorn's? Yeah. Yeah, you got one of those for your nuts, huh? Yeah. He just uses a baby Bjorn instead. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look at that cute little baby. Ew. <laughs> Whoa, lady, get back. Hey, hey, nice manscaping, though. Did you save 20% by using our promo code, great friends? As nice always. manscaping, Browner. As always. Look, I see a lot of Padres fans on Twitter who seem very defeated already. You know, like like this is this is the wheels coming off. Yeah, right both here. of you. No, no, no. Again, I'm just being subjective. Both okay. of us. Both of you I'm over here, like. You're like over here, Mr. Hall of Fame Clayton Kershaw's pitching tonight. We have no chance. Mr. I'm so concerned because Clevenger can't pitch anymore. They're screwed because the bullpen. Like, what the hell happened? You, you, I don't know why. You did this the last series too, Scott. You predicted a loss game one, and you're like, it's over. I don't know. I don't know. Like, dude, it's a series. Let me explain <laughs> something to you, Grande Alejandro Padilla. Let me explain something to you. See, when you take off on a roller coaster, it goes like this. Okay. Tick, 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 tick. It's going up, right? This is the, you guys been on a roller coaster. Tick, 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 roller coaster going up. Brown, are you afraid of roller coasters? Never get no one ever in my life. You would be. You would be. I'm good. Brown, what are you more afraid to do, man? Are you more afraid to go on a roller coaster or swim? Oh, 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 I'll swim. I'll swim any day of the week before I go on a roller coaster. What would you do first? Would you go on a roller coaster or shower in a locker room after a game? Shower in a locker room after a game. Really? Yeah, I'm not getting on a roller coaster. You're, You're that crazy. scared of roller coasters? Not doing it. What I'm gonna pay somebody to scare me for? That's stupid. Yeah, you know now what we got to do is wow. now we got to get them up to either Magic Mountain. We just got to go Knott's to, Berry, dude. Belmont you know? Park. Just get on the little one. Oh yeah, we well, just do it locally. Yeah, Listen, that's what y'all don't understand. That that amount of money don't exist. It literally really? doesn't. What about I for cannot views? get you on a roller coaster? What about no. for views? What? What about for views? No. Yeah, it's way more money valuable than money. Right, money is clearly not the metric that moves the needle for you. Yeah, true. You with a GoPro strapped to your face, and me no. and Scott recording you from different angles, riding the Belmont Park roller coaster. Again, it's good. I survived way too much in my life to down the roller coaster. Have I you ever know. heard of anyone dying in the Belmont Park roller coaster? And I apologize if anybody has died because I didn't look that up. <laughs> you gotta fact check that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure somebody lost a life on that thing. All right have Have you ever been to Knott's Berry Farms? No, I don't. I see. Listen, I don't even tempt fate. I don't even go in those places. Don't go in them. The okay. only time I've ever been to Disneyland is for work, and that was at four a.m. I'm there's no reason for me to go inside. What about the zoo? Because I'm not getting on the attractions. What about the zoo? What the zoo? Yeah, they got rides at the zoo. Yes, there is. There's one. What is it? The little the little bucket rides that takes you from one park end of the park to the other end of the park. Oh and man, I'm, I didn't even know like that. A, was, yeah. like, I took baby girl to the zoo. She that's did what I was great. saying. What about SeaWorld? Would you ride a roller coaster on SeaWorld? Nah, man, that's for that's for that's for water animals. I'm not getting on no rides in no SeaWorld. What about at, at Universal Studios? Do you do the Hollywood tour? Ain't never been. Hmm. Ain't never been. I'm from Chicago, man. I'm not from California. So all these uh well, I these, figured you would go. Could, why if I'm not interested in it? I don't want to die doing that. I'm good. I will pass. Okay? Hmm. Again, I will tell y'all this. I've survived some things. None of you will ever go down an alley for. I damn sure ain't finna get on no roller coaster. I'm not gonna pay somebody a handsome reward to scare the hell out of me. For what? I ain't doing it. No thanks. I'm good. I, I'm a survivor, okay? I don't put myself in unnecessary risk for no reasons. I'm not getting on no roller coaster. That white people stuff. I know. I know. I, know. I do this all the time. I, I put myself in unnecessary risks. You know that uh, we're now less than two weeks away from the Challenge Athletes Foundation Iron Manish yeah. event. And so this past weekend, I did one big bike ride. I said, I got to get out there and put some miles on, you know? So I rode my bike from Solana Beach up to uh, San Clemente and back. It's about 90 miles. There's a humble brag. <laughs> and um, and it's today's Wednesday, the and I haven't recovered. Wait, did, okay. did, wait, 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 wait. Time yeah. out, time out. When you yeah. rode the 90 miles, did you put your bike at your girlfriend's house? 
that's remodeled mm -hmm. and it looks amazing thanks to her and her ex-husband? What do you mean that I put my bike there? I'm just saying. If you humble no. bike. No, I'm not. I'm, no, I, I I rode the bike 90 miles. I got off the bike. My ass was killing me. I acted like I was fine. And like three days later, I'm still just tired. You know, I'm hurting. So I'm pu I put myself in this unnecessary situation where on Saturday, October 17th, I'm going to swim a mile. I haven't been in a pool or the ocean or a lake or anything to swim. I'm going to swim a mile. I'm going to ride 133 miles on a bike, completely unnecessary risk. And then I'm going to walk, try to run, crawl six miles to get to the 140 mile mark and raise money for the Challenge Athletes Foundation. By the way, if anybody wants to sponsor this or like wants to donate to CAF, I know it's been a rough year. I know a lot of people have lost their jobs. So if you can't or don't want to, no sweat at all. I'm just trying to help raise money for an organization that does great things for people. And this year, I didn't get a chance to raise any money. Alex, maybe what we could do is this afternoon is we could put out a tweet with the link for anybody that wants to uh, wants to help. You know, so roller coaster. Yeah. You yeah. guys are giving up hope, and you're like, so no, I'll, let me tell you so, about no, a roller coaster. No, let me right. So let me get let me get back to this. Let me tell you about a roller coaster. Thank you. Roller coaster goes like this, Browner. Since you don't know, <laughs> tick 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 tick. And Browner, let me tell you something. Once you're on the roller coaster, brother. There's no getting off. You understand what I'm saying? Alex, can you confirm what I'm telling this man? Uh, well, I did get off once because the roller coaster got stuck and I had to get evacuated. So oh. see, see what I'm getting. What? But, but, if, but if everything works, if everything works the way it's supposed to Browner, <laughs> it goes like this. Watch me now. Tick, 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 tick. And once you're on it and you're sitting there, you're like, there's no getting off this. Yeah. Mother. And some, no and, getting off. and some keep going. Tick, 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 tick a lot higher right. than others. Right. And, and you get all the way, tick, tick, tick. And then all of a sudden, Browner, here's what happens. You've made it to the top. And then whoo, down it goes. Down it goes, man. And then once you're on the roller coaster, there's lots of highs and lots of lows. Because you went tick, tick, tick. Then you went whoo, down. And then all of a sudden, wait a second. What's going to happen here? Whoa, you go upside down. What happened? Okay. And then wait a second. Ooh, 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 corkscrew, corkscrew, corkscrew. I think I'm going to throw up. Is it high? Is it low? Am I happy? Am I sad? I don't know what's going on. I'm on the roller coaster, Browner. Doesn't this sound fun? I'm on the roller coaster. So Alex, let me finish this thought by getting back to you. Mm -hmm. I'm on the roller coaster. Okay. Meaning the Padres game one, I didn't feel so good about it. Now going into game two, rather than faking it and acting like I'm super confident, I'm on the emotional roller coaster. I'm worried about Clayton Kershaw tonight. I'm worried about the Padres bullpen. I'm worried about the Padres bats getting cold. And if everything goes your way, which is they hit, Slam Diego shows up, they get a good starting pitching performance. If everything happens by tomorrow, I'll be up on the roller coaster. Right now, I'm down on the roller coaster. Tomorrow, I could be up on the well, roller coaster. Let me coaster. tell you this. That's the roller coaster. Let me tell you this because I started the show off by saying how right I am all the time. I'm not faking my positivity today because you kind of have to. Because if you don't think the Padres win tonight, then you might as well just not watch the rest of the series because they're not going to win any other game besides tonight. And Clayton Kershaw, this, this, this masterful performer that he is, this future Hall of Famer that he is, you know when he does well? When there's no storylines regarding him, when there's no there's no pressure on him. And right now, guess what there is? There's a storyline behind him. The bad blood storyline is behind him. The playoff Kershaw is now in his head behind him. So I don't foresee some magical seven inning, 10 strikeout kind of performance from Clayton Kershaw, but I choose to believe that. And if you guys choose to be a little bit more negative today, a little bit more uh, you know, on the wheels about it, that's up to you. But I think tonight, if you don't win tonight, and if you don't expect to win tonight, you ain't going to win this series, so you better damn well win tonight. I think you're right, hey, man. man. I think you got to win tonight. When you're on the roller you coaster as a black man, you put your seatbelt on, you get in your car, you drive past a police officer, and it's like, and then those lights going, it's like, woo, circle, 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 circle. And then sometimes you don't make it out. You've turned my roller coaster baseball emotional fandom conversation into – Police brutality and yeah, know. yeah. I'm living it, Scott. I'm living it, baby. I can't get off this roller coaster. Let's talk to Bro Burke Grossman about roller coasters, please. Burke Grossman next. Great friends on a Wednesday afternoon. Time 
for Burt Grossman. Oh, everybody loves Burt Grossman. They uh, think he's yeah. the greatest. They think he's the funniest. They think he's the most handsome. <laughs> they think he's the most virile now that he's on the total tee. Everybody, here's Burt back on Scott Kaplan and crew. Hi, Burt. Hi, Scott. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> hey, I'm better now. Gross, better now. dude. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, you got, the Rona? Crazy, you got the Rona too or what? No, I don't have the Rona. I'm coughing up Cabernet or something. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know. Bert I drank a, a little video. last night. Oh, yeah. Bert sent me a video last week um, of he <laughs> and his sexy girlfriend, Tanya. And uh, <laughs> he, he said, we're like four bottles in at this point. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to uh, double date, Bert? Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the video. What happened in it? <clears throat> well, I don't know. You tell so me. So apparently, at the why don't you send it to me and then I can play? It. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not letting that one. That's like the Uber <laughs> driver I spit on. I'm not letting that one out. This one, I um, apparently they don't tell you at the total T that not to drink, you know, three bottles of wine and then and then give yourself a shot drunk. Because I missed and I hit my like uh, hip bone. And the needle, like Ben, it hit my hip bone. Who would have known? <laughs> Come on. So, so let me get this straight. You got drunk. Yeah. And then tried to administer your testosterone yourself. No, I didn't try. I did. You saw the video. Yeah. But, but, but <laughs> yeah, instead of, that wasn't but, good. But instead of putting did the needle Bert into the Did Bert send you a, a, a nude butt video? Kind of. Yeah. Because yeah. you see yeah. crack? Oh, you could see no, more No, because I, I hit my, I hit my <laughs> hip. It wasn't even – I wish I would have done it that way. Then I wouldn't be sore. Then I got a big bruise, but I did it in the side. I'll be honest with you, Alex and Browner. It, it is the first time I ever saw Bert, like, ever saw him that way. Cause well, yeah, because he doesn't do showers. God. Right, because in college God. he didn't shower with the team, and in the short period of time that I was with the Chargers, he never showered with the team. Smart Dude. man. Yeah, I'm not showering with grown men. Thank oh, you, Bert. Man. Thank crazy. you. <clears throat> That's crazy as hell. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Right, when you go to the total T, because this is an important thing, because now you're probably freaking people out. So, <clears throat> like, when you go to the total T, like, do they send you instructions of how to do it? And you were just too drunk to follow them, and you said, screw it, or what? Yeah, no, they give you – you can either go there and get your shot from a professional, but, you know, I don't listen to instructions. I have ADHD, and um, that on top of some wine, and I'm surprised I didn't do it with my neck. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but I'll do, one, I'll do one on air next week if you want. I'll give myself a shot. Yeah, we, listen, I, I'll tell you this right now, Bert. Now that you found out that your testosterone levels are low and you went to the Total D Clinic and you're getting your testosterone treatments and you're trying your best to deliver them, uh, once you get this thing down, you're going to feel like, you know, that first-round draft choice back in the late age. You're going to feel like the exact same guy. I already do, actually. It, it started kicking in a couple days ago, I could tell. Really? I like, yeah, I like it. I, I've been getting stuff done. I've been laying around for like ever from COVID. I think it just kills COVID, kills everything. All right. I'm going to start, start drinking that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bert Grossman is here. Bert, um, let me start off by asking you, are you watching, because you're not a baseball fan, are you watching <clears throat> Padres, Dodgers? Did you see what happened last night? I, I watched a little bit. I can't um, – I'm not a big baseball fan, but I, I can't watch, like, like 10 pitchers pitch throughout, like, the whole bullpen thing. It's like, you're going to get swept. That's going to – I mean, I don't even know anything about baseball. I know that. I mean, you're going to just – every inning's a new pitcher. Come on. I mean, it worked one game against Cardinals, but against the Dodgers in a series, seriously, you're going to end up like the Pirates. Mm-hmm. What do you so think? You're, you're calling for a Dodger sweep now. Yeah, I am, actually. I am. Being the baseball aficionado I am – you can put that money on it. <laughs> you know that. I'm, I, I, I played football and I picked the damn Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. You going to listen to my baseball picks? Please. <laughs> Bert, do, you think so people, me... do you think people are watching and listening to this and be like, why does Scott ask him about baseball? I, I, yeah, I think they ask that all the time. Because uh, really? I know I asked that question. I'm like, why are you asking Bert about baseball? He didn't watch that. Here's why I ask, though. I ask because I feel like Bert represents the guy who for the last 10 years hasn't cared one bit about the Padres, but all of a sudden now during this run is paying more attention. <clears throat> Clearly, Bert is not. So, True. Bert, let me, let me ask you this. No, question. no, I, I'm paying attention. I mean, I saw, I saw the 26 pitchers come out there. I saw that. Right? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, that's great. That's Bert, great. We're going to beat Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this question. 
texts. What did you think last week when the Chargers, your former team, jumped out to a huge lead on the road, cross country at Tampa against Tom Brady? Here's what I thought. This sets up perfectly for the Chargers, the Chargers. to do exactly, <laughs> yeah. to do what they do. What do you say, Bert? I, I agree with you. Um, you know, I, I can't get past this whole Anthony Lynn, uh, Justin Herbert thing. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me. I, I haven't seen a kid like that other than Mahomes maybe. Um, you know, he's – I mean, you watch him. He's, he's, um, he's, the, he's the guy from Green Bay. I mean, he's, he's it. And this whole Tyrod Taylor thing constantly like bringing him up is just shocking to me. I mean, Justin Abrams said, the, or Herbert said, um, the future of the Chargers. Anthony Lynn's not. I mean, I could see him. If this was a real ownership group, somebody would have went in and said, you know, shut the hell up about this kid. This kid's lights out. He's killing it. And you're, you're going to kill his, um, his flow. But nobody's there to say that, obviously, because it's the Chargers. And, and obviously, if you're not going to say that, at some point, you have to fire this guy i mean i said it last week you can't have a top five roster on paper every year and be a bottom five team every year it's coaching all right Bert grossman what do you think now then about tom brady and the buccaneers because you probably know that even though you'll be wrapped up in padres dodgers thursday night i will that, I will. that the, the buccaneers will play the bears thursday night so do you expect Tom Brady to keep it going against the Bears in that extremely potent offense? They, they are. What do they got, like 30 points in four games, Brown, or what do they got? Again, don't – They couldn't come even beat in, the Cowboys. Don't come in here quoting these bogus facts that you know are not true. Yes, they struggled to score last game, but they've had over 24 points in the other three wins that they've had. No, don't, don't do that did, to me. Did Khalil Mack play in that game? I didn't even see him. Actually, Cleo Mack had a great game against the Annapolis Colts. The offense. What just were you watching? Points. What Cleo were you watching? Did play because the one highlight he made was when he dropped a, a very easy interception. Oh yes, yeah, so I guess he did play. I thought he had the Rona and he was out. I thought he's been out all season. He's no Aaron Donald, but still. Man, look at this. Look at this. Dude, hey, Tom Brady, what? by the way, and here's uh, it's. Uh, I mean, wait, listen. wait, hold up, Alex. What's worse, can, saying Cleo Mack's better than Aaron Donald, or saying the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl at this point? The he Cowboys win the Super Bowl. No, no, no. Scott, jump in. Jump Equally in. Oh, as bad. You know, Browner um, and Alex have a bet going. Alex said if the, if the Bears make the Super Bowl, he'll Win. give Browner his brand new car, and Alex will continue to make the payments on his brand new car. Only Browner will own it and drive it. That's how confident Alex is that the Bears won't make the Super Bowl. Wow. I think if you – I'll give you my house. If the Bears win the Super Bowl. And my two dogs. Damn, JB. You're coming and, up. And and I still got three syringes full of 100% testosterone I'll throw in. The hold bag. on. Hold on. Hold on. Can we have Tanya too? <laughs> uh, that's, I think we're reaching levels where we're, we're not supposed to cross those levels on those lines. Is that if beyond? The, with the, the Bears? Levels? Yeah. yeah. If the well, Bears win Chicago, the Super Bowl, so yeah. Tanya going to be celebrating with me anyway. Yeah, she'll leave Bert Chicago. anyways. Mm -hmm. Voluntarily, she'll leave Bert. Yeah, she is a Chicago girl. Or she got some Chicago. Like, Y'all sound like straight haters, man. Y'all really All I know, like, dude, is I that you lost tomorrow night. All I know is that you only put up three points against the Colts. And Nick Foles That's is supposed to be your savior. They're the best defense yeah, in the league. Mm. That's true. They are. They mm. are. That's right. Mm. Hey, by the way, speaking of Browner's team on Thursday night, Bert, your team on Sunday, or no, excuse me, Monday night, your Chargers against my New Orleans Saints. And my man, why are, they, why are they your Saints? Because of Drew Brees? That's right. Oh, okay. Also, also, that game's probably getting moved to Indianapolis. <laughs> oh, really? Because of Hurricane Delta. Oh. Hurricane the, filling man. the blank at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even, I, exactly, I swear yeah. to you. Like, like, there's so much going on in the world between sports and then, like, the real news of the president and COVID and all this other stuff and vice presidential debates. Like, there's a hurricane right now. I didn't even know about it. Like a big Why one. Yeah, and hurricanes are always those goofy ass. But they name them after like black people, like Hurricane Shaniqua or something. If it's going to hit New Orleans, Browner, any thoughts on Browner? That? You think I that's know. racist? They use white names for hurricanes and, and Hispanic. They just they they name hurricanes what they name hurricanes, man. First of all, yeah, but it's never it's never like Hurricane A. A. Ron or anything like that. Why? <laughs> a. A. Ron. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Saying the Hurricane Shaniqua, there, that, that would be good. Name. 
Come on, man. You imagine that on BT, Hurricane Shanique was about to hit Chicago. But do you good. even listen, man? Do you even want Hurricane's name? Like, like, what if it's a bad one? You know, then you got the name like that Katrina. You can't name anything else Katrina anymore. Like that name's gone. What did Hurricane Burke do? Hurricane Burke? Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's a Hurricane Burke. No, there's it was, no Hurricane Burke. You know, he he stabbed you. himself in the hip with a needle. No, That's no what Hurricane, Burke Hurricane Burt. Hurricane Burt this past year was very weak. Like not even a tropical storm. Had no wind yeah. going. But now the new Hurricane Burt. Total T. Yeah, he's bringing it. He'd Put it right it. in the eye and got me up to a Category 5. So wait, so the Chargers and the Saints could be moving to Indy? Yeah, so it's a Monday night game, and it's supposed to like make landfall, and the Saints actually might move to Indy just to practice like they did with Katrina when they moved to Indy to practice over there. Um, and they're saying I that thought they, they moved they could, to Houston. I didn't know they moved to Indy. That's wow. an article I read. So um, That would be great if we had Phillip Rivers on, on the Saints sideline at Indy. That'd be good. That would be cool if Phillip Rivers was there and he was standing on the Saints sideline like supporting Drew Brees. Yeah, I'd like that. Support, not, supporting his, not supporting Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor. Did you guys hear about <laughs> the uh, – Speaking of people and, and st- stuff down there, did you guys hear about Florida lifting all restrictions and now the Dolphins are allowed to have 65,000 people in their stadium? I, I don't yeah, think no. they could fill – I don't think they could fill it if they tried, but now they're allowed to have 65,000 people. All Florida stadiums, college, pro, whatever, all restrictions lifted. Really? Because, you know, when the Chargers played at the Bucks last week, you know, there were like 12 people in the stadium. Yeah, all restrictions are lifted. I don't know if the NFL will allow it, but – I mean, I'm sure the University of Florida or Florida State are like, yeah, screw it, let's do it. Jackson, I don't know. Yeah, Miami. But, yeah, Pennsylvania lifted. Not not fully, but they're allowing people in the stands now, too. I think up to, like, 10,000 or something. But Really? It, it's funny, I, too, because, like, Tennessee lifted their restrictions as well. But yet the Titans are, like, the whole team has COVID now. <laughs> the two more two more players today tested positive. So oh, now geez. the Titans may not play on Sunday against the Bears. If I'm the, if I'm the other team... I'm going to start saying that they should forfeit because clearly they did something wrong that the rest of the league hasn't done. Cam Newton got it. Uh, the Patriots cornerback also seems to have gotten it as well. But that's two people, not 19 people at this point. But that you know, organization the, did something wrong. But the kid, the, you just mentioned the defensive back from the Stephon Patriots. Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore. There's that picture going around on Twitter of him – hugging it out with Patrick Mahomes Mahomes after the game. So Patrick Mahomes and Gilmore shake hands, hug each other, sweat on each other, breathe on each other. I mean, theoretically, you would think Patrick Mahomes right now is like, oh, no, he had it. I didn't know it. He got a positive test. Now I may get it. What do you think, Bert? You think the NFL is going to have to deal with this, or is it, you think they can? This can be like an isolated thing. Alex is sharing a screen for those of you that are watching, and you can see the picture I'm talking about. Bert, you think this is going to get worse, much worse for the NFL? I, I don't know if it's going to get worse. I mean, there's going to be outbreaks, but again, I mean, you get the president who's a physical mess pretty much, and, and he's up out of the hospital in a couple of days. I mean, it just, it just goes more to the narrative that this isn't that dangerous for at least elite athletes. I mean, we talked about this a hundred times. I don't, everybody's kind of opening up. I think they are thinking at this point that, you know, shutdowns aren't helping at all. They're just, I mean, everybody's getting outbreaks at the point. I mean, look at every – I mean, high schools are opening up everywhere. I don't know who's going to be next, but I know California will be last. I, I want to ask this question, up. but I want to ask this question. Do you guys think that San Diego will have a spike in numbers based on last Friday night and even the Thursday night before when there were thousands of Padres fans all congregating maskless outside of Petco Park? And then Friday after they won – when there were thousands and thousands of people flooding the streets of downtown San Diego. You guys think that we'll get any spike because of that? No. No, because we don't, we don't you know, if one thing we've learned, you can't get it through protests. <laughs> you can't get it through rioting. And you can't get it through celebrating the Padres. So you can only get it at church and at uh, sports events. That's all you can get. Yeah, it. and you can't get it if you go to a restaurant and your party six or less. And you can't get it. What are, what are the other rules? Yeah, you, can, yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. you can only get it. Yeah. You can only get it. Sir, you can't get it at home. Depot. Here, you can't get it at Walmart either. But here's the thing about like COVID and, and regardless of how you feel, cause I agree with you guys. I think athletes for the majority will be fine. But point is you can't have players play with it. You know, like it's just like they're, it's never going to be acceptable. So the, the chances are that the NFL is going to continue to get positive tests. And really the question is, what do you do? Because you're not going to allow players to play with it. That's just never going to happen. So re- let's stop talking about the effects, the, the death rate, the whatever. Let's just talk about like positive tests are not going anywhere. 
So what do you do? Because if the well, Titans can't play, I mean, but if the Titans can't play on Sunday again, like what do you do now? Because you already pushed their bye week back. Now they don't have another bye week. So what do you do? Is is Browner's thing going to happen? Because this is clearly they did something. And keep That's in mind, remember, remember. Wait, that could be the only way the Bears make it to the Super Bowl. Everybody else tests positive for COVID, and the Bears are left. <laughs> and the Bears make their own bubble and don't freaking leave it. <laughs> yeah, and then they play each other. Inner squad still lose. <laughs> right, and Khalil Mack drops another interception this time for Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> hey, but you know the Titans are undefeated at three zero, and the Bills are undefeated at four zero. They're supposed to play each other this week. Last week, the Titans undefeated were supposed to play the Steelers undefeated. So you know if you if you start forfeiting games. The Steelers and the Bills, they get wins for not even playing. That's a huge benefit to them. A monster I mean, what, benefit. Again, I don't I don't how do you not say, all right, you you're an elite athlete and you have flu like symptoms. You can't play and you have to you can't play, just period. You can't be around anything. Yeah, you could take Tyrod Taylor and and put a, a pain killing injection into his rib and puncture his lung, but that's okay. It's like, what, what, at what point is one thing more dangerous than the other? Because that you won't can play, but you can. Tyrod Taylor getting his lung punctured by a doctor won't affect the other team. It won't affect the center. Again, if, the, if they get it, though, what is, what, is the, what is the deal? Again, if we have a sloppy you ass 74 uh, year old uh, fast food eating president that got it, and he's did out he? playing golf two days later. Oh, did he? Oh, go. Oh, 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 wow. Wow. Did Listen. He? Okay, did let's he, say he, let's say obviously he got it, but he also has the best medical attention in this freaking country. So like, I don't know. Was I the only person in America that questioned whether or not he really had it? I mean, I know everybody no. thinks I'm out of my mind, but I mean, if 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 going into if if you felt like you don't believe in Trump, if you don't believe that his stuff, and you go, oh, he's full of crap. Like, why do you automatically just believe that he got it? Because what I said when he, when he announced that he had it was, I'll guarantee you two days later, he walks out with his arms raised like, I beat it. I did it for you. I did it for me. I did it for the world. It's a miracle if you really want to know the truth. And so I, I, mean, I thought for sure, I'm like, this is a reality TV star, a master media manipulator. Um, yeah, I, could, I wouldn't put it past him to fake this whole thing. Now everybody says to me, well, okay, smart guy. Well, then how does everybody else have it? Like 50 people. What are they all in on the lie? What the doctors? And the do- are- yeah, the doctors are in on it. Everybody's in on it. They didn't yeah. have it. I mean, come on. Mate. I know. It blows my theory up. Look, uh, the, does the, it? The pro- the, but the, I don't know. Does that to the point. <laughs> it, 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 that's what people think. They think it blows my theory up. You can't have people out there playing with it because they go home to people. And the people who they go home with, they go to restaurants. They go to stores. You could be the super spreader. You could turn into patient zero. You don't want that. Whether you're, And some people may be asymptomatic and not be getting tested at home. Let's say Cam Newton went home to a family of four people. He's asymptomatic. He wouldn't have known for a couple of days. And so now he's giving it to the people in his home, and they've gone out in the community, and they've lived their lives, and they come into contact with a 74-year-old person who eats Big Macs that's out of shape, that can't get a helicopter, that can't get two experimental drugs that are – basically been done from stem cell research so there you go people who do all lives matter you you, you can't you can't do that you can't so do going that. back do you it's think it's, you think you think they should have done what the nba done and done a bubble for the nfl yes yes they, they're rich it's the they're the richest league in america and half those owners own hotels so you, you you mean to tell me you couldn't have bought an entire hotel and housed your team in it you guys hey we we'll bring all the food we'll bring all the entertainment you, can't, you cannot leave this building without permission, whether it be only for practice and game days. They can afford to do that. This is the same league that doesn't have full-time officials. Like, this is it's a joke. It's a joke. Okay. What, what kind of entertainment are you talking about? Hey, listen, it, it, you got to test them strippers and bring them in. Oh, whatever it oh, takes. Oh, that whatever kind. Okay, takes. okay. You got you wow. to make sure your players are happy if you're going to quarantine them, period. Pornhub premium. If you get Pornhub listen. premium, I'm there. You could you just give the owner of Pornhub some NFL yeah. stock on one of these teams and free membership for everybody. I like that. I like that right there. Alex, as usual, this whole Burt Grossman conversation off the rails. completely. I wouldn't just, say off the rails. No, no. we still talk about football. Yeah, in yeah, our, in Burt's in Burt's way. Yeah. Right. Scott, why you hate? I'm hating. No, Scott. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I'm loving. No hate. Love. Mm. You're a hater. Mm. All love, all love. All right, Bert, it is great to visit with you. It is great to see you. I do look forward to a double date with you and Tanya. You know, be nice. What about the other two? Me and Rachel. 
No, these two, Alex. Oh, and, these uh, two right here. Brown. They're they're, a, they're yeah. a nice couple. They're a good looking couple. Make it a third date. No, no, no you don't care. You, you don't care about you don't care about COVID. I can't hang out with you. Exactly. You went to that Quinceanera. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going, a Quinceanera. It was going a to a party. A wedding, going, to, going, to, same. going to a family party on Saturday too. Super spreader. Super spreader. Oh, Me and Trump. <laughs> yeah, you got Me and Trump. guacamole. I'm spreading guacamole, not COVID. Racist. Wow, it is. <laughs> Burke Roseman. Hi, Bert. We love you. We thank you. Burke Roseman being brought to us by the Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Thank you, Bert. And I just want to mention right our friends at Seven Mile Casino, SevenMileCasino.com. Hey, Bert, when are you yeah. and me going to go play cards at Seven Mile Casino? That's my question. I love that place whenever you want. <clears throat> That's where I had my original um, sign in with the Strike Force press conference. We had it at Seven Mile Casino. Oh, how cool, man. Bert, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Great friends. Uh, thanks to Burke Grossman for stopping by. I don't know what exactly we talked about. I've been trying to sit here and figure it out. Like, did we talk football? Maybe a little, kind of. Um, Chargers at Bucks a little bit. Chargers at Saints a little tiny bit. Bears and Bucks on Thursday night, maybe some. Uh, Titans, COVID, NFL COVID, maybe a little bit. I don't know. I think we, we spent a lot of time talking about Burt trying to inject himself with the total with testosterone team. drunk. Yeah. Don't do that, yeah. please. Don't, yeah. Don't do that people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, let me, uh, let me say guys, I'd love to get back to really the big story of the day. I really would. And that is, um, that is the Padres and the Los Dodgers. Padres. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of uh, Padres Dodgers real quick, I say the story of the day. I've been getting hit up a lot by people on social media, especially Twitter, uh, talking to me about the debut of the Arash Markazi show today on the radio on 1090. And people are like pissed about Arash. And I was like, yeah, when they told me that Arash was going to do the middays, I was like, yeah, people are going to be furious. And Bill Hagan was like, why so? Why is that? I'm like, you don't seem to understand, Bill, that Arash is considered a Charger and Spanos sympathizer. And if you go back and you look at Arash's columns with the LA Times, anytime he covered the Chargers, it was a giant suck-up piece, okay? No question about it. And uh, people will say all the time, you know, what are you, on the payroll of the Chargers? It's just like sometimes organizations will offer things to columnists, to writers, that, that makes their lives better. It doesn't mean they're paying them cash. It doesn't mean that they've got, you know, 50-yard line season tickets. They just do things to incentivize you to write good about them. By the way, that's what a publicist does. That's what a public relations person does for an NFL team. They try and sell you on the positivity, hoping that you'll write it. That's why a guy like Kevin Acey, as an example, the, the Padres break stories generally through Kevin Acey because Kevin Acey will write what they want and they want him to write good in the Union Tribune, especially when they've been bad. And he's willing to do it. And I would say that if I had to just gather a little bit of this, whether you're Colin Cowherd, who loves to kiss ass to the Chargers because yep. they gave him access to the war room on draft day, something a sports radio talk show host never gets. But they're like, hey, Colin will go on the national airwaves and Colin will tell everybody how awesome the Chargers are and that'll be good for us. So that's positive PR. That, that's them doing their job. Whatever they did for Arash, I have zero idea, but it certainly looked like he's a, a big sympathizer. And so, listen, call them out, tweet them, uh, Facebook them, do, you know, whatever it is you got to do, because now here's a guy who grew up in LA, who grew up dreaming of being on the old extra 690, who gets himself an hour on the new 1090. And if you're a San Diego sports fan and you don't like it, let them know about it. But I would say this, that my vision was, and it, not that Arash is my creation, hardly, but my vision was always, we got to be bigger. We got to be, we, once the chargers moved and I heard the phrase, the mega market, I said to the people at 1090 back then, you got to start selling in orange County. You got to start selling in LA. They didn't want any part of it. That's why they went out of business. So can I say something in addition to what you're saying? Mm. And people are going to take this the wrong way, I'll but see. that's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Arash not talking to y'all. He's an LA kid who grew up in LA. This station reaches past Los Angeles. He said yesterday on the show, 
He was in the car, and it was clear past Santa Barbara because he was driving to Santa Barbara. Arash is trying to reach an L.A. audience. That's his market. That's what he's trying to reach, and this station gives him the opportunity to do that. If you don't want to listen to the dude, don't listen. He won't even know you're not listening. So, like, like let it go. Let well, everything. But but think about it. you know, Coach Kintera used to be on on ninety seven three on on the middays, and they took Coach off because you know this is the budget cuts of of corporate radio. They took Coach off. They moved him over to Padres pre and post game, as I understand it. I don't think and that's now, accurate, dude. Oh, it's not. Oh, good. He I hope a, not. he had a procedure or something. He was on the IR for a little bit. Oh, good. I hope I'm glad to hear that because I thought this was terrible news. But they've gone into a national show in the middle of the day. You know, they didn't go replace a, yeah. a local show with a local show. God, I hope Coach is okay. Hope he's marvelous and wonderful. He's back. I think he's oh, back. Oh, good. Oh. So, look, yeah, I, Browner, I actually think you're right. I think Arash is a guy who grew up in L.A. Yeah, he's got a story of coming down to lots of Charger games because there were no NFL games in L.A. I did receive one tweet, though, Alex. I don't know if you saw it or not. Did you see the tweet from Omid? He's the dude up in San Francisco that's a you know mm -hmm. crazy Padres and was a San Diego Charger fan. And we, when we've gone to to to, uh, to do games or shows up in San Francisco or Super Bowls, uh, we've gone and partied with these guys. Yeah, you know. So Omi sent me sent me this tweet saying, "Hey, dude, you don't get it, man." Um, and I I wonder if you guys ever get this, but sports radio has been dominated by white guys forever. Okay, and yeah. And, and so now um, what Omid was saying to us on Twitter was, dude, oh, my God, you guys have a Persian guy on the radio talking sports. That's like a win for us, for guys named Omid, yeah. okay, or Ahnad or Kayvon or whatever your, your friends' names are that are Persian out there, right? Um these guys were like, oh, my God, yes, a Persian dude on radio talking sports. And so, look, I got it. I knew San Diego sports fans would be pissed. I also knew, by the way, that this would generate a lot of um, talk and conversation. I told Bill Hagan, be prepared, man. Be prepared for the hate to be thrown your way and my way. I'm like, but that's, that's what you should be doing. You should be creating a stir, stirring the you-know-what. So – Anyway, I got a lot of feedback on this Arash stuff. In San Diego, unless I'm wrong, somebody correct me. There are four minorities on air, and three of them are on this station. The other one is Tony Gwynn Jr. I don't know the, the ratio. Uh, 23 and me for everybody. But for the most part, this station implores most of the minorities that are on air in, in Southern California. or well, San Diego, California. So I, you're right. A lot of people want to see someone in their likeness talking about sports because they talk about sports. The sports radio landscape is littered with white people, littered with them. We've heard it before. Hear it from another perspective. Hear it from another voice. Hear it from another lifestyle. Same thing for Alex. How many Mexican people are on radio? For me, that's what made the CBS thing cooler than anything else, to be an African-American on at night with a Mexican on at night across America. That's dope as hell. Obviously, you're a Jewish guy. Jewish people are on everywhere. But <laughs> the point of it is, is that you ain't you, special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're just never, every, Jewish every broadcaster's got a Jewish last name from who went to Syracuse. You, they're not right. special about you, Kaplan. So for us, it, that it would have been big for us to be across the country. That's nobody's doing that. No other show would have been able to offer that insight into the sports world packed into one show. So that's a real thing. And so the people that are upset about it, I get it. I understand why you would be upset because of the thing that he said about San Diego. But you got the power, dude. Don't listen. Well, I just think that, um, look, it, anytime a San Diego sports fan has to deal with anything L.A. related, they generally don't like it. They didn't like the fact that the Clippers went to L.A., they didn't like the fact that the Chargers most recently have gone to L.A. They didn't like the fact that San Diego State's going to go play in Carson. Hell, people didn't like the fact that I went to work part-time for 710. They're like, dude, you're San Diego. You've been part of this community for the last 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to go broadcast on 710? And I'm like, look, you, you clearly don't understand what we do for a living, and that's okay. I know you're 16 years old, and you have a, a fake name on Twitter, and your parents right. don't know what a disrespectful <laughs> little snot you are. But 
but you don't get what we do. You got to work when you can. Mm. Um, nonetheless, you know, it, actually this whole conversation reminds me that I've been following along. You guys know that Qualcomm's coming down. Like I really, if I'm being honest, I said a long time ago, like they'll never do anything with that place. They'll never move it. They'll never take it down. 30 years from now, it's just going to be a big block of concrete. Nobody uses it. No concerts, no games, no nothing. Nothing's happening. Well, I got to give credit where credit is due to San Diego State. Look, I may not like the fact that they're moving their football team to Carson, but the truth is um, Qualcomm is starting to be pulled down. And um, Is it really and, getting and pulled or is it just kind of naturally falling itself? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Yeah. You know what I got to find? I got to find Alex, the video that I did with Jim Steig when yeah. Jim Steig walked me through the stadium and showed me all the, you know, the, the, the way the stadium was falling apart. Cause I see Bernie Wilson, bro. I see Bernie Wilson posting pictures of things inside of Qualcomm as the media, it seems is getting kind of its final taste before it all comes down. And I know for me, I don't know about for you guys, and I say you guys, meaning everybody listening and watching. I have no desire to go in there and take like one last tour. I don't have any desire to go sit in a seat and say, well, I remember this game. I was here and Tony Gwynn did this or Barry Bonds did that. Or I have no desire to go into that stadium and say, I was here that night when Darren Sproles took over for LaDainian Tomlinson and the Chargers beat Peyton Manning and the Colts. I swear to you, I get chills thinking about it because I was there. I don't have any desire to go in there and go, me and Billy Ray and our Biznatch producer back in the early 2000s created batting practices for, for fans on the field. And Mark Grant threw a perfect strike to Billy Ray, who could barely swing a bat, but hit this bomb monster home run down the left field line. And then we had this girl who was an All-American softball player at Georgia Tech from San Diego, and she hit a bomb off Mark Grant. I have tons of – I've got – a legit 20 years of memories inside of Qualcomm Stadium. Charger games, Aztec games, huge concerts, uh, U.S. Women's National Soccer games, television broadcasts, radio broadcasts. Uh, I, I mean, I raised my son inside of, of Qualcomm Stadium, but I have no desire to go in there right now for any sort of nostalgia. Like, I got to have one last tour of this place. It's a dump, take it down. And let's just all move on with our sporting lives. That's how I feel about it. Well, that's very yeah. harsh of you. That's very, very harsh of you because I'd love yeah. to go in there one more time because mm. I, I I don't even remember the last time it had to be a San Diego State football game was the last thing I, I did. I think the last event ever will be the Holiday Bowl, the USC, the USC Iowa. Was that the Holiday Bowl this year? And that's good. That's it. Nothing happened ever since. So um, as far as Qualcomm goes, it's it's I, I don't. Is nostalgia the right word? Because I am happy that it's going down and being replaced. So I, I, I don't have like emotions about it. Like I'm so sad. But it is it's interesting to see history happen and history get torn down. You know, like that you kind of live through it and you don't really know it until you're you're past it. And just even right now, we're in the middle of a pandemic and it's become so normal to us and so every day that in 10 years we look back to like, do you remember that? You remember how crazy that six months was? And I think like we're living through a moment in San Diego sports history where we are closing that chapter for good. That yep. Chargers chapter is dead. And right yep. now we're living it. But in 10 years, you'd be like, damn, do you remember Qualcomm used to be here? You remember when the Chargers left? You remember when the Aztecs played their first game here? Like it's it's one of those things where I try to step back. Um, this episode of The Office said like there was like a, a line that's been turned into a TikTok that said, I wish you could no, you're in the better times when you're in the better times. <laughs> and those are that's I try and pull back a little bit and and really think about that we're living in this moment where we'll, we'll never step foot in Qualcomm for a game again. We'll never step foot in Qualcomm for a concert again. We'll never I, we'll never be able to bitch about how terrible and 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 rotted and flooded and they still have box TVs. Like you'll never see the 55, the 19 sections again. And I can appreciate that right now. And I try to, and I, but I'm happy at the same time. So I'm happy that it's getting torn down because something better is coming. I Good actually have riddance, like, I, 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 yeah, I Good have like riddance because you know what people don't talk about Qualcomm when it comes to baseball. You know why? Because Peco's awesome. So it's up to San Diego State to put something awesome there, and no one will talk about it in in, in, in great lore. They'd say it was a dump because it is a dump. It's always been a dump. 
and you didn't know it was a dump till Petco got built. He was like, damn, this is nice. Where, where this been? But are they building yeah. Petco? What? Well, that's, well, that's but, the question. But, are they building but it, Petco? But it's, right. not just that. but it's not just that. Here's the next part of it. You ready? See, I've got this bitterness. And I know that there's other people that feel the same way I do. But I will say this. I've got a built-in bitterness about this stadium because um, if you're a 49ers fan and you had love for Candlestick, even though you knew it was a dump, you know what they did? They replaced it with a better stadium, even though it's an hour south, and and they kept their team in the region. Um, they're still the San Francisco 49ers, even though they play down in Santa Clara and they don't play up in San Francisco anymore. They're still the San Francisco 49ers. San Diego County is not getting a new football stadium to house an NFL team. So I've got this built-in bitterness because when I think of my memories of Qualcomm Stadium, I'm telling you right now, they started in the early 90s when I was a, a free agent, undrafted kicker trying to make it on the Chargers. And I, I remember going into a football game against the New England Patriots and, and Drew Bledsoe and Bill Parcells was on the other sideline. And they called field goal in the, like the third quarter. And I'm like, what? Field goal? You guys, it's like a 52-yard field goal off the baseball dirt, right? Like, you don't try those. Like, yeah, get out there. Try it. Okay. I kicked this ball so hard and I couldn't find it. I didn't know what happened to it. I thought I hit it five feet off the ground and I, I, I just couldn't see it. And one of my college teammates who was a rookie with the, the Patriots who was on their field goal block team was holding me like, like he tried to block the kick and then he was holding me. And he's like, oh man, oh man. He, he saw the ball. I didn't see the ball. And it just barely went left. And Dan Fouts was on the call and he went, oh, like, because it was a bomb. And, and I, I played there that night, came back a couple weeks later, was like, was in a, a game as an undrafted free agent, as a charger. I, I loved being there in that period of time. I thought it was so big time. And then as a broadcaster on the CBS NFL telecast, working with everybody from Jim Nance to Marv Albert to, to Dick Ember. I mean, these, these things all happened here in San Diego for me. And, uh, and so, you know, for the, the stadium to not be replaced by an NFL stadium continuing to host your NFL team and the team having moved to LA, there's just this bitterness I have uh, about this stadium. I don't feel like, oh, so many great memories there. I, I feel like that stadium failed this community. That franchise took off, I guess. I don't know, as people are getting nostalgic about the teardown of Qualcomm, I guess I'm not really there. Let me say one thing. Corky's Pest Control, my man Cork, you know him, 1-800-901-1102. If Qualcomm Stadium were going to stay up, they'd have to call Corky's. They'd have to call him to, to come get rid of the rats. Seriously. The underbelly of that stadium was disgusting. Some people even posted pictures of a giant pallet of beer that said, you know, don't drink or something oh, like, Bernie. you know, yeah, Bernie posted. It was like, bro, look at all this beer wasted. Um, look, whether you've got ants, spiders, rats, mice, termites, any other kind of pest, Corky can come take care of it. LA, Riverside, San Diego County, LA, uh, Corky can get to you. If you're watching these Padres games prior to um, them going off the local Fox Sports San Diego, Cork was everywhere. He was in every single game, his commercials. The guy loves sports. He loves the Padres. He loves San Diego. And he loves killing pests. 1-800-901-1102. Call Corky's today. How about that? Do it. All right. And I love how we got back to the main story of Arash Merkazi. <laughs> How did we get to that? I don't know, but you, you're you like, let's get back to the Padres. And then we got back into Arash and Qualcomm somehow. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, the Padres, listen, tonight, this game is so huge. And I don't know how everybody's feeling about it. Um, I'm hoping that these Padres, these Slam Diego Padres show up. But um, I got to say, I'm, I'm nervous about Kershaw because Kershaw looked like Kershaw against Milwaukee, 13 strikeouts in a game. I would think that Clayton Kershaw doesn't necessarily have respect or fear for the Padres, even though they were ranked the number one lineup remaining in baseball. Um, I know that Clayton Kershaw realizes that Manny Machado and, and Fernando Tatis and Will Myers have all been bombers this year. But I think Kershaw is bound to have one great year in the postseason. 
and I'm worried about it being he's right had here great right years. now. He's that's the crazy part about Kershaw is that he's had great years. He's had great performances, but the ones that stand out are the ones where he garnered the name Kerchoke. And it's I personally think it's not only Kershaw. It's Dave Roberts. Has he learned how to finally manage when to take Kershaw in and out? Because that's been Dave Roberts' biggest complaint from Dodger fans is he doesn't know how to read the situation. He doesn't know how to read the room, basically, when it comes to Kershaw. He's over-reliant on Kershaw. And we saw against the Padres this year, he had a quick hook against Kershaw. So he's had a difficult time trying to figure out when Kershaw can go and can't go. So I, I think, listen, is it possible that Kershaw goes out and throws seven masterful innings? Yes. But is it damn well possible that the Padres go out there and hit a couple home runs off him? Absolutely. And that's another storyline that we have really not even talked about on this show. Manny Machado versus the Dodgers. Going back and facing the Dodgers. Let's not forget that video that I tweeted a while ago where Machado bet his contract, similar to me betting my car, against the fan saying, we'll win a World Series before you win a World Series. Manny, it's your time. Step up. Got to perform. By the way, I saw a lot of Dodger fans last night on Twitter going, oh, I see Machado hasn't changed. Still not hustling down to first base. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they were loving taking their shots. You can't look at Kershaw and Dave Roberts' relationship and say he relies on him too much. You cannot rely on your best player too much. Like, that's what the best player is supposed to do. You can't over-rely on LeBron. You can't over-rely on Michael Jordan. It's their responsibility to show up. That's why I think tonight's going to be trouble. All right, coming up, Mark Loretta will be here, the former Padre player and front office executive. What does Mark Loretta think about game two? Let's talk to him coming up next. Great friends, Mark Loretta is standing by. He's ready to jump on, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or you're listening on any of the audio podcast platforms. Here comes Mark Loretta. If you're listening on radio, I can't wait to hear what Mark Loretta thinks about game one from last night, the Dodger win, about game two coming up tonight, and you know what Clayton Kershaw might bring, what the Padres' bullpen might look like, uh, when the bats will, will wake up. Mark Loretta on the way in just a matter of moments. I do just want to mention really quickly, 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com, just minutes from downtown San Diego. If you want to have a great time in a really safe environment, you can go to 7milecasino.com, read about all their COVID protocols, dealers wearing gloves and masks, uh, glass partitions between the players at tables, stations where you can sanitize your hands. All of this, by the way, is happening outside with fresh air being pumped in to a casino that's been built outside the actual indoor casino. So that's why it's outside. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Here is former Padres second baseman and former Padres front office executive in his home office where, by the way, I see jerseys behind him, Red Sox, Astros, and Dodgers, because that's true. Mark Loretta did play for the Dodgers. And now, for those of you watching, he's starting to show you elsewhere around this office Look at that. That's really cool, Mark. How many jerseys you got hanging up of? How many teams did you play for in total? Five, five total. Five Those total. just have to be in, 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 the, in the shot of the screen. That's all. Are they in chronological order? They are, yes. So if you, go, if you go back over to your first team, okay, let's say Milwaukee Brewers. Right, that's number one. Mm-hmm. Then I actually had a short stint with Houston, but I, but I don't count that. So the Padres, uh, then I went to the Red Sox. Then I went to the Astros. Then I went to the Dodgers. Right on. So, like, do you consider yourself – do you, like, consider yourself, like, one team more than the other? Like, do you consider, like, I'm a a Red Sox or I'm a Padre more? Or because you played for five teams, you don't really – Who's ever got the best record at the time is who I usually – Nice. Because yeah. last week you're rocking the Northwestern hat, or two weeks ago you're rocking the Northwestern hat, you know? Like, you just got to represent the moment. That's right. That's right. I mean, I, you know, I feel like I, I grew up in the Brewer system, came through the minor league, spent my most time there eight years. Um, but then, you know, with being, living in San Diego for as long as I have and playing for the Padres, that, that's probably where my allegiance lies, to, to tell you the truth. When you spend time with so many, when you spend time with an organization, at what point do you realize these are good people, this is a good situation, they've got things going straight, or, uh-oh, I might need to get out of here? <laughs> well, you don't really realize uh, either of those, th- those things until you, you leave your first organization, right? So if you come up through the Brewer system, it's a much different experience than coming up through the Yankees or the Red Sox experience. So 
when I went on and played for teams like the Red Sox and the Dodgers, it was a little bit of an eye opener. Like, wow, you know, like I, I never got recognized in Milwaukee. We talked about that before. In Boston, it was everywhere I went every day. So the guys who come up with those big market teams and then go elsewhere to the smaller market teams, they, they usually, you know, has a little bit of a, of a, of a down effect on them or they feel a little bit uh, like a, a little bit of a demotion. How about the other way though? How about, cause I remember Mark Loretta, I remember when you got traded from the Padres to the, the Red Sox and check me on this, but it was a really, really emotional time for you because that was a super close knit group of guys on the, those Padre teams. And I remember saying to you, rather than being upset about the trade, like the emotions of the trade, dude, you just got the call up to the big leagues. So I'm wondering if, if you played for the Dodgers, but then you went to play for the Brewers and you went from lots of media to no media, lots of recognition to no recognition. How was it the opposite way when you went from the Padres back then to the Red Sox? Was it good? Did you like it? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I mean, I, you know, I had been 10 years in the league already. So to go to, to a team like the Red Sox, right, I played with the Brewers a little bit with the, with the Astros and the Padres, you know, mid, mid-level mid markets at, at that time. Just just the fandom and the, you know, the generational fans in, in places like New York and Boston and, and maybe, you know, Philadelphia, Chicago, et cetera. It's just, just, just a little bit different. It just, it, it is. Um, I never liked that analogy because I think um, didn't Doug Mirabelli when he got traded back yeah. to the to the to the Red Sox say, okay, boys, I'm going back to the to the show. You know, and I don't think his teammates took that 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 well. Um, I think I think it's gotten a little bit closer um, as as some of the parity and some of the revenue sharing and things have gone. That that you know, it's not as as drastic as it's been with the big markets and the smaller markets as it once was. I've Mark always read that. Cool. Let me just real quickly. Let me just ask you a quick question here about because and John, I have no idea where you were going with this, and we both jumped in at the same time. So, if you're if you want to keep going on this, great. I wanted to move into the Padres Dodgers. Okay, let me do this real quick. I've yeah. always wanted to ask this question of a retired athlete. When you've now been through your career, you're living your life. What is better as an athlete? The quality of life in, on a good team in a good city where you can raise your family, or the quality of life in a fast-paced, moving, crazy environment in the clubhouse, but a winning situation? Uh, I, you know, I, I think, honestly, if I've had it, a lot of it depends on how you're playing personally. Uh, you know, you get a little bit of, of uh, blinders on, and, and, and you kind of feel good when you're playing well. Uh, although, of course, it, the, the goal is to win. Um, the, the big sweet spot is if you could be playing well, a big contributing on a team that is winning. That, that's, the, that's the golden spot. But, um, you know, you, you get caught up a little bit in your own personal, uh, you know, success or, or failure or whatever it is at that moment. Mark Loretta is here. Let me, let me jump into the last night. So, you tell me, you know, Mark, as, a, as somebody who played, somebody who was in a front office and who just a year ago was on the bench with the, with the Chicago Cubs, I wonder about how managers make certain decisions. Here's the example. I'm watching the Padres last night. And obviously, as you know, Clevenger couldn't make it. I mean, he, he was clearly hurt and gave you what he could give you. When they bring this kid Weathers in, I'm fascinated by this story. 20 years old, major league debut playoffs against the Dodgers. I mean, I can't believe it. He's 20. Uh, yeah. My son's 20. He graduated high school the same year. I'm like, that kid's in, in the major leagues. I've been fascinated all year with the fact that Tatis is only 21. I know. But my, my question to you would be this. Why do you, when a kid is in the game and he's playing the way he is and he's hot, one and a third, two strikeouts, no hits, why don't you ride him a little bit? Why, why take him out so quickly? Why put more taxation on the arms of the bullpen. What did you think? Yeah, first of all, very impressed with, with what Ryan did. I, I know David Weathers' his dad very well. He was a teammate of mine, one, one, a good friend of mine. I was actually texting him while he was – I know he was going through, you know, more anxiety than he ever had as, as playing himself. But, you know, I, I think there was a script there, and in there, there's some uh, – there, there's an idea that, okay, you know, he's, he's gotten out there, he's been successful, you know, let's keep it that way. That's one thing. The other thing is – I don't know where they were exactly in the lineup in terms of matching up. And I think they had this thing mapped out. If, if Clevenger couldn't go very long, this is how they're going to try to piece it together. I mean, Weathers is a wild card. Like, you're right. He could come in, be nervous, and not throw anywhere – throw seven balls off the screen. 
then things go haywire. But he, you know, to his credit, you know, growing up maybe around the game helped him, but he came in and he was a bulldog. He looked like he belonged big time. It really Mark, did. This is just a like related but more curious question because Tingler got thrown out yesterday in his first NLDS game managing. And when you were the bench coach for Joe Madden last year, I'm I'm just assuming he got tossed out at least once and you took over. Yeah. How much does the manager, I guess, still manage after he gets thrown out? Because not like football where he's calling plays every 30 seconds. So is he still involved a lot or is he truly, truly just out of the game? Depends on the, on the manager and the situation. When, when Joe would get thrown out, he'd go back and pop a bottle of wine. And it, it was, it was, you know, <laughs> I, I, it was all I, you. <laughs> it was all me. And it was like, okay. <laughs> I, I gathered around with the pitching coach and, and the hitting coach said, okay, what are we going to do? I, I have a feeling I'm, I'm almost certain that Jace was right down there last night, you know, calling stuff and talking to the pitching coach, et cetera. That's mostly what happens. And I'm sure if Joe, you know, if we were in a playoff game and Joe would have gotten thrown out, he would have been right there. Um, you're thrown out of the game, but you're not, you're just out of the dugout. You're not, you just have to be out of sight. So it's, it's still, you're still pulling the strings really. What do you do? You yell through the tunnel. Hey, you next just, guy. You know, you got a guy, you got, you got, you got a guy there that just, you know, realized the message or, you know, I, I'm sure he, you know, within, within earshot probably. So what do you think, Mark? You know, you, you have to play three games in the first round. You have this crazy excitement of what happens in game two and then the win in game three and the city blows up and goes nuts downtown. Like you just won the world series. Um, now you got this chance against the Dodgers, but you give up game one. You've got huge pitching problems now uh, because you got two starters that really can't pitch. You got a question mark about a third. You're facing a guy tonight in Clay Clayton Kershaw um, that, you know, 13 strikeouts against Milwaukee a week ago. I mean, just, just where, where would you be at right now as you're thinking about this game? Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure they're not thinking about this, but I, I got to believe that the Padres, you know, deep down feel like they're playing a little bit with house money. You know, I mean, I, I think when they lost uh, the first game in, in the first round uh, and, and it was looking bleak and they ended up winning that series. And then when Clevenger and Lamette went out, they were like, geez, you know, our back's against the wall. So, so I think they got to play free and, and easy. I think they got to play loose, nothing to lose. Uh, Kershaw's gettable, especially in the playoffs. I mean, he's, he's not had the greatest record in the playoffs. He's a tremendous pitcher, no question. But you can string a few good, good at-bats together. They have some very good right-handed hitters on, on the Padre team with Tatis and, and Machado and Pham and those guys who match up well against Kershaw. So it's, it's going to be a matter of, you know, they've got to get out to an, er, an early lead, I think, and, and, and settle in, uh, play from ahead, not try to chase, uh, you know, down the Dodgers when they're leading. One of the things I took from last night was walking off the field, the Padres had to feel good about the game because I didn't feel like they got blown off the field. I didn't feel like they, the Dodgers dominated them. I kind of felt like they, they lost the game. As a, as a player in a playoff situation, when you're coming off the field in a game like that, the next day, what's the first thing you want to do? What, how do you want to get into the clubhouse? Is there something you want to say to the team? Is there some type of – as a player or as a manager, is there something specific you want to try to bring light before you guys run out there? You know, maybe. I, I think it just depends on, on what the vibe is. And, and, and I, 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 I would hope that guys were happy and – not happy, but, but at least felt good about, the, you know, the performance and not getting blown out of the, out of the field, like you said. Um, but pretty much the other thing is you don't, you don't want to – cause you know heightened anxiety or, or any kind of panic by saying let's have a meeting and here we, here we got to go and this is our, our let, let's just do what we've done you know do we, we know we can do this in this situation with our backs against the wall in the playoffs let's just do what we keep doing what we're doing that's the way we're, we're good baseball players let's go Mark Loretta is here on a Wednesday afternoon getting ready now for Padres Dodgers game two are you worried about the Padres bullpen because they had to pitch as many guys as they did on, on the, in the final game on Friday. And then they had to pitch a whole bunch of guys last night because Clevenger could only give them an inning. Is that a concern for you? You know, they had two days off leading into this series. So, so now, and they spread the innings out, I thought pretty well last night. So I think they can get away with another bullpen game today. I, I think more importantly, maybe game three might be the game where they're going to need some length because then you're going to have guys who probably pitch back-to-back -back days going into game three and maybe not being available. So uh, I, I think the strategy, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, should we go with somebody who can give us a little, little bit of length or go maybe the bullpen game, I think you do the bullpen game today 
and then try to get some length in, in, in game three. But we'll see how it plays out. I told the guys, like, it's pretty simple to me. You're, you're not going to beat the Dodgers with, with two hits, three hits, and one run while striking out 14 times. I, yeah. I understand that there's a lot walks. of I, I understand there's a lot of concern about the pitching staff, obviously, but they just, they're just they going to have to produce offensively. And we saw them struggle game one against the Cardinals and then turn it on. But to me, it's pretty simple. You just got to produce offensively. This team is built to slug, man. It's got a slug. And uh, they've got to they get the bats going early and often tonight. Uh, they've, they've had a great offense all, all year long. Uh, Kershaw is tough, but he can, he can be had. Um, I, like I said, get an early lead will be big for them tonight. Uh, all right, so let's go the opposite direction because, Mark, your, your career has that Padre jersey hanging over your right shoulder and over your left shoulder, the final team that you, you played with and the team that you finished your career with was the Dodgers. Go over to the Dodgers side of things. What do you think they're saying right now? What do you think that, that they're concentrating on? Um, you know, maybe, maybe they should be looking at it like, look, um, we had a whole bunch of guys on base. We had a lot of opportunities. We really didn't do very much with our bats. We still manufactured runs. Um, we got what we could got, get out of Bueller. So, you know, maybe, maybe the Dodgers, uh, well, at least I'm curious, what would you be saying or thinking if you were in the Dodger clubhouse? No, they've got to feel a little bit fortunate that they got that win last night. No doubt. I think Dustin May coming in just with unhittable stuff was, was pretty amazing. But I think tonight they got to say, okay, let's, let's sweep the leg. You know, let's Kershaw go out there and dominate. Let's win this game. We'll take, you know, command of this series. And, and then we've got, you know, basically to win one out of three, the next three. So I think they're, this is a, this, this is a game they want to win desperately uh, to take control of this series. And I think if they don't win it, could be some anxiety over there. What do you think about Dave Roberts right now? I mean, I'm just curious. Do you think, like he's got to be looking at the Padres and maybe he's not necessarily thinking like they didn't ever give me an opportunity. They never even so much as gave me an interview, but forget about the personal stuff. If the Padres were to beat the Dodgers and knock them out of the postseason, I would think Dave would be in huge trouble at that point. You know, Dave's in a tough spot. He, if they don't win the world series every year, he gets huge criticism, but he's, I think he's handled it very gracefully. You know, the playoffs are a little bit of a crapshoot. I mean, they have they have a very good team, obviously. Uh, but, you know, he's got a four-year extension, so they, I think they believe in him. Uh, he, he's, he's revered over there in that clubhouse. I know that. So, um, you know, I think he's passed all the stuff with the Padres uh, on a personal level, like you said. And uh, I, I, don't, I think it's just another team to him at this point, honestly. Um, even though he's from San Diego, you know, he's, he's got his eye on, on the World Series. As a viewer, obviously it's it's huge change going from the bench to back to the viewer. But has it bothered you not having fans in these playoff games and then being in this bubble? I feel like I don't know why baseball chose that particular stadium to host the the, the championship series and the World Series. Like I feel it feels so lifeless in there. At least yeah. at Petco, it, it looks awesome watching the Yankees in the Rays. Has it bothered you, like kind of a that they chose Texas Arlington and then the lack of fans? Yeah, I don't know what went into, what went into the, to the decisions. Uh, but, yeah, I, I agree that the Arlington, even though the roof was open, it felt like it was a dome stadium. It's, it felt dim in there and, and, and a little bit lifeless. Uh, it it's just kind of is what it is at this point. You know, obviously the, the energy level uh, isn't there um, because of the fans aren't there. It's, it's, uh, but this is what we have, and, and I think the you – know, fans, fans will be allowed the next two That'll rounds. That'll be good. That'll be great. Yeah. I think so, too. I think, like, I, I genuinely – I, I didn't really miss it during the regular season, but there right. is this level of, of just intensity that's just not there with, with, with no fans that I, no, that yeah. I really miss. It's a playoff game, and, and people stand in every pitch and every strikeout, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome atmosphere. You know, it is awesome, though. That you say it like that. You know, last night I was saying, as we were all watching the game, like everybody's into it. Everybody in the house is into it. Every kid is into it. Everybody's sitting watching every pitch. You know, it, it's fun to see the Padres, not just in the postseason, but to get this shot against the Dodgers. Yeah. That's why I think people went so crazy last Friday night. It wasn't just that they won. It's like, guess who's waiting? We got a chance to knock out the champ. Right. That's right. No question. Yeah, no, it's, it's great for the city. I, I just wish, you know, Petco was open, obviously. But the other thing is, you know, regardless of what this team does, I think this year, I think it's built for, for a sustainable run. You got a lot of guys under control. You got guys like Weathers. You got a tremendous farm system still coming through. 
I think, uh, you know, things are looking up in, in Padre land. Do you think that we'll see Gore at all this series? Now, if Clevenger is hurt and he's not going to pitch, they're going to need another arm, right? Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. I mean, AJ's not afraid. He's not afraid to pull that trigger. Um, that'd be fun. I'd like to see that. Isn't that Why crazy? Not? We went from no one ever making their playoff hit debut or making their debut in the playoffs to now there's been three players in baseball this year making their debut the in the playoffs. It, yeah, that's the way it's been. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, these guys, and I'm sure going into a stadium that's not full of 50,000 people probably helps these young guys. Honestly, it feels a little bit more like a spring training game like they've played in, even though it's on national TV and all that stuff. I think they're able to control their emotions a little bit better. I also think it's important for these things to happen, though, because for baseball to kind of make this this gap up of, of kids playing, we need to see younger guys playing sooner. I yes. think for guys to go through the minor leagues, it takes such a long time before you even see a guy at 23, 24. You need to start seeing more 19, more 20 year old guys playing, whether they be at this at this height or at this moment or not, because I think that'll juice younger players to start choosing baseball. That's a great point, John. I think I think you're exactly right. I mean, why not? Let's see these guys. If they're if they're ready, bring them up. Um, you know, like the McKenzie Gores, Abrams is another kid in the Padres system that's a stud. He's you know he's close. He's only 18, but you'll see him in you know hopefully in a couple of years. Um, you know, the other thing is, uh, yeah, yeah, this whole thing with bat flips and all this thing. I mean, I, I, I kind of like this, this, this new style of just yeah. let it, let it hang out, man. Let it, let it, you know, don't, don't embarrass the other team and don't, you don't have to, you can do it with just kind of pumping up your own team. But I like the, I like the handshakes. I like the bat flips. I like, I like that excitement, that energy. It's, it, it's what the young kids want. Hey, Mark, before you go, we got about a minute, just real quick comment on Manny Machado, Alex, you brought it up earlier that when Manny left the Dodgers and came to the Padres, he had a comment like, the Padres will win a championship before the Dodgers will. So Dave he told a fan that right. while he was in the, in the batting circle. He told a fan, and the fan recorded him saying that in the batting circle, yeah. yeah. So Dave might be over it, but what do you think about Manny versus, you know, I mean, he wasn't there a long time, but still. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was when Turner – went from first to third last night. The, you know, the ball came into third and turned it. It wasn't even a close play, but Machado slapped a pretty hard tag. Yes. On. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, what is that just kind of joking or I, I don't know the dynamic there, but that seemed, that seemed a little real to me. So I think there's, I think there's a little bit of a chip on, on Manny's shoulder with the Dodgers. No question. Mark Loretta, it is great to see you. Great to be with you. Thanks for talking baseball with us this afternoon. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Anytime boys. All right. Thanks Mark. Hey, Mark Loretta, thanks for doing this, man. Always appreciate it. For those of you that are just getting with us on radio, Mark Loretta was just here. Really great interview, conversation. If you want to go back and listen, you can go to any of the audio podcast platforms. You can definitely use our YouTube page. Um, You can find the the video of the show on Facebook. So uh, wherever you're watching or listening, awesome visit with Mark Loretta and uh, enjoyed that. I really did. So um, real quickly, before we keep rolling, I want to mention my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Cooper Loop, Gary, thank you, buddy. Thank you for saving money for so many great friends out there, including our very own Corky from Corky's Pest Control, who called me and said, hey, should I be using Gary to refinance my house? And I said, of course, you should be using Gary to refinance your house, Corky, because you're the kind of guy that wants to say, you're the pro, you handle it. Okay. And then once you hand it off to Gary, you are in really great hands. 858 376 1299. 858 376 1299. Whether you're looking to buy a house right now because interest rates are so low, if you're looking to refinance and save money, Gary can help you there as well. Bottom line eliminate the smoke and mirrors. No more shell games. Gary has helped so many great friends buy their first home or refinance and save money. Call Gary today, 858 376 1299. 99. All right. So we're kind of closing in here now uh, on the Padres and the Dodgers game two. I I can't help it. I'm on the emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you are. I'm on it. I'm on it. You know, last night didn't feel good about the Clevenger situation going in. Feel really bad about the Clevenger situation going out. Mm -hmm. Very worried about the pitching staff. Worried about facing Clayton Kershaw tonight. Hoping, of course, that the Slam Diego Padres show up in a big moment against a superstar pitcher. Tonight's the night, man. You have to tonight, tonight, man. I'm going to live on this because I could be proven wrong, and that's fine. 
but I think you're probably looking at Paddock on the mound tomorrow. And if you're un- if you're not confident tonight, are you really going to be that much more confident tomorrow? If you lose tonight, no. So tonight is the night. Let's just call it what it is. Really, I hate to be that guy, be it. but it's a must win. Oh, must win, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, go, oh yes. my God. Okay. Yes. Okay. Must uh, win. Skip. Skip Padilla. Must okay, win. Skip Padilla. Must win. Wow. I agree. Listen, will you be, will you honestly, like, wow, will, Mac, wow, will, Max Padilla. Will you any more really, hot takes? Will you truly be confident, John Browner, if the Padres lose tonight and they're down to nothing, which means they're going to have to beat the Dodgers three in a row? They haven't done that all year. And you're not going to have Clevenger. And most likely you won't have Davies again unless they throw him out on two days, what, two days rest, one day's rest, whatever it is. So you got, you got to win tonight. You have to I, win tonight. You're down two nothing. You're not going to beat the Dodgers three in a row. You're just not. And you can mark this tape if I'm wrong. Thank God I'm wrong. Great. I'll take don't, that. Don't time. hedge your bets. Don't stop it. Don't hedge your bets. Just man up. I say what did. you got to say. Just don't did. hedge no bets. And oh, the Padres got to win tonight. If the Padres had to win three in a row, I'd feel confident because they can hit the baseball. Period. End of story. The strike zone is the same for everybody. So if they went down two games to none, and in the third game they bombed away to, to a win. That confidence, we've seen that confidence vibrate through that entire roster. So I wouldn't be that shook if they got down two games to nine. For me, for them, it's not over until they're eliminated because I believe with their Wait, hitting ability, they're never out of it. Are you, did you say it's not over until they're eliminated? Yeah. That is That's a pretty fact. good. That is a That's fact totally right good. there. That is something, be, that, that is something that Magic Johnson. Facts. For the magic first Johnson time in a that. long time, 100% agree Straight with you. Back. By the way, that Magic Johnson tweet, Oh for three, bro. He has tweeted and deleted three different times. <laughs> so he he called him Austin Bueller. Well, he's he's not the one that tweets. The story came out that he has someone he tells someone what to tweet and then they tweet for him. That person so fired. The first tweet of the day was, you know, shout out to Austin Bueller for whatever. Wrong. Deletes it, but he's been saying he's been trying to say dominant and he keeps putting dominate. <laughs> and he's he's tweeted and deleted it three times. I I'm gonna go back. Yeah, it's still there. Still there. Is, it, is that like Trump today tweeting uh, cough instead of caught? Oh, you, tweet, you misspelled for us too. So here it is. Dodger Nation, what a dominant <laughs> performance by Walker Bueller and all of our relievers. Uh, he didn't put dominant. He put dominate. So 0 for 3, Magic. 0 for 3. All right. So um, listen, you know, Browner, I got to say that if the Padres go down 0-2, I don't have any any confidence at all that they would come back. And I'm <laughs> a only, roller coaster. I'm just, I'm, but I'm just being honest with you because the thing is, I could try and fake it and phony it, but I'm just being honest with you. Look, if they were to lose this game tonight, they're going to have to do something they've not been able to do all year, which is win three in a row against the Dodgers. By the way, in 11 games so far, the Padres have won four versus seven for the Dodgers. If the Dodgers win tonight, they will have won 66% of the, of the matchup. So why yeah. would we believe – Pretty good, right? Why Very would good. we believe that they that they would be able to come back three straight games? And by the way, at this point, you're going to be done with pitching. You're going to have nothing. You're going to have no starting pitching, and you will have worked through your bullpen. So I'm I'm not confident that if the Padres go down, and I'll give you an example. When the Lakers went up two nothing, like I went into the NBA Finals hoping that the Miami Heat would be competitive. Couldn't really find a way on paper to make a persuasive argument that the Heat could win, uh, but I, I was hoping they could make it competitive. And I will tell you that even in last night's game, I was rooting for the Heat to make it a series because I don't feel like there's anything compelling in the NBA Finals. I feel like we're just waiting to crown LeBron, and then we're waiting to argue about who should be the MVP. I feel like it's inevitable I don't feel like it's questionable. So I was hoping that the Heat would come out last night and turn it into a series. When the when the Lakers went up 2-0, I didn't think to myself, you know, I really do think the Heat can come back and win this thing. I think they can win the next four or the next five. I said, they're done. In fact, not only did I say they're done, I said, they're going to be swept. I was wrong. My original prediction for the for the NBA Finals was Lakers in six, Lakers go up 3-1, Heat battle back and won't quit, get it to 3-2, and the Lakers end it in game six. After the first two games, I went Lakers sweep over done. So my point back to the Padres-Dodgers is this. When a really, really great team 
like the Dodgers have been, don't you, no World Series to show, but eight straight division titles. When a great team gets a big lead, it's just not statistically in your favor that you're going to come back and win. The Miami Heat were not and are not coming back to win. And if the Padres get down 0-2, I'm with Alex. I hope I'm wrong. If you Here's call it a difference. hedge, call it a hedge. I hope I'm wrong, but I wouldn't have a lot of confidence. Here's the difference in that. I'll give you this. The Golden State Warriors were 73-9, and nine, up three games to one against the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know what happened? LeBron James happened. So if, 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 if you're asking me, I can tell you with full confidence, if the Dodgers got up two games to none, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. can happen to the Los Angeles Dodgers. All it, oh, you've seen it. We've all seen this. All it takes is one big play from that guy. And then the roster, the lineup, the dugout, the bullpen catches fire. And they can sustain this for days. So I've seen it. So I believe in this happening. Uh, the problem, the thing about believing something is it doesn't require other people to believe it for it to happen. They've got to see it. One person needs to believe it. Everyone else needs to see it. I believe that they can do something like that. There's no better time to make history than in the moment. You know yeah, what? There's well, no better time to do win tonight. Win tonight, right? I'm just saying if they don't, the odds are the odds are way more against them winning tonight than it was game one. Well, at least through the first inning. I mean, you know, you you were hoping that Clevenger was going to be who he was when you went out and traded for him. I give Clevenger all the credit in the world. This guy was willing to risk his body and risk his career for an organization that he barely knows and a team he barely knows, but. The guy's hurt. He is hurt. And he ain't pitching again. Can I ask you, I mean, John, do you think that the Heat can come back and beat the Lakers? No. God, no. I, so, like, that's kind of my point, though, is that is that you're the ultimate optimist when it comes to the Padres, but all signs are pointing to no chance if the, if the Padres fall to 0-2. And why is that? Because they don't have their two starters, and the Heat don't have one of their starters, and one of them's hurt. And, and it, all signs point to, no, it's not possible. Okay. Everything is telling you. That it's not possible. But can I ask you a question then? Mm -hmm. Is is Jimmy Butler better than LeBron James or 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 Anthony Davis? No. No. Is Fernando Tatis the best player on the field? Is that arguable? Yes, arguable. very arguable. Very yes. arguable. And, and that's my whole and that's my whole point. LeBron James was the best player on the court when the when the Warriors got chased down by the Cleveland Cavaliers because the best player can change the tempo and can change the momentum of the series. That's why I believe Tatis has the ability to do that because I've seen it uh, last series against the Cardinals. They look dead in the water. This guy pops one over the fence, and now all of a sudden, here we go. That's that's why I believe that because I've seen it with my own eyes. If, if this was something where I was believing like Paddock, like, oh, he's got the skills, he's got the talent, we just haven't seen it yet. I, I would be a little shaky in my prediction and my belief, but I've seen this happen offensively for this team. And I, and again, we've seen the Dodgers choke. So. All right. Well, listen, I, I hope that Alex is right. That this is a, and, and I believe it, by the way, he this is a must win game. You can, you can ridicule it and say it's not, and it's not until it's really mathematical elimination. And that game three, if the Padres were down Oh two, that's a must win game. I disagree. There you go. This is a must-win game. If if you win this game, you're live. If you lose this, because remember, if you win this game, you're beating Kershaw. You know, Bueller may have pitched in their first game, and he may be considered their their ace, but he'd been hurt with this blister situation for weeks. I mean, this is still Clayton Kershaw we're talking about here. We're talking about a guy who had 13 strikeouts his last time out. I I if you win tonight. You've beaten Kershaw. You've not only evened it 1-1, you've evened it emotionally that, hey, we're in this thing, and they know we're in this thing, must win tonight. I do hope, just by the way, on Friday night, that the Heat do win that game because Keep it's open. just boring. It's just it, it's kind of boring. Like right now, Alex, you and I argue about this all the time. As a Laker lifer, you find it to be exciting. I found the first, you know, three series of the bubble playoffs, each one to be exciting, even though the Lakers were winning those in five. The NBA Finals, I, I don't want it to be um, anticlimactic. Too and late. 
I, I know. And frankly, I feel like it, it, it has been from the, from the very first game of the NBA finals. I feel like the NBA finals have been anticlimactic. This is listen, this is a terrible matchup. This is a terrible finals. It's boring to watch. It's terrible television True. with the exception of James, uh, Jimmy Butler in game three. This has just been a super boring finals to watch. The heat played three rookies major minutes last night. Again, Props to the Heat for beating everyone else to get to this point. Props to the Lakers for crushing the Heat because you can only beat the teams that you play. But it is what it is. It's a it's a boring watch. If I was a Lakers fan, absolutely I'd be pumped. But that's that, that's that's where it stops. This is no one's watching this. And I'm a I'm a basketball guy. I'm watching. But for the most for the majority of the country, people aren't watching this. Well, that's I'm just a it. fact. I know that's just for that, but it is a fact. It is. You know? I mean, the, the country has tuned out of the NBA. A million different reasons I can come up with why, but um, country's tuned out. On the the, the, from a viewer standpoint, I don't want to. I don't want to say this about the NBA. No one's watching because of other things. I think no one's watching because there's a, a there's a lot of stuff going on, and B there's a lot of real life situations going on around the country. The Preakness had the lowest ratings they've had. I think the uh, from what I saw in five years. Uh, football viewing is is around average. No one watched any hockey, and baseball viewing is down. People golf viewing is down. Golf's not taking a knee. The horses ain't <laughs> taking a knee. Like what? Hey, so what? What is it? I think it's, it's a real battle life. for eyeball. I think it's a battle for eyeballs. I think there's just so much going on at the same time that you have to. You know, how much time can you really spend in front of a television? watching right. sports you know like right. you, do you not have other things going on in your life that you think are just a little bit more important You're like now nah, i'm gonna take five hours and watch a baseball game right now right everybody everybody needs to remember what we're saying right now because next week it could all change because nba will be gone and there's a slight chance that the padres will be gone and then you'll be stuck watching what you know so enjoy it while you got it people i don't Dude, care no what doubt. And i know a lot of people that are like multi TVing it because they want to watch it all and obviously, I don't have a ratings meter in my house, so I don't know what people, where those ratings are coming from. But I'm watching everything, and I'm yeah, watching every football cool. game. So I, I'm enjoying it now because I tell you what, that Charger hates coming as soon as the pod, if the Padres get eliminated. <laughs> that, that Charger hates coming because we're going to start tuning in on that because what else we got after next week? It is true, though. Like Everything's going on at the same time, and basketball is going to wrap real soon. Baseball will wrap about, I don't know, two or three weeks after I got to take a look at the schedule, but you get what I'm saying. Oh, and they then, play it every day. And, well, and then once basketball is over and once baseball is over, you're now into where you thought you were going to be in November, which is all NFL, college football will come back, Pac-12 will come back, Mountain West will come back, and you'll be all football until... I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the, in January, the yeah. So you don't late. even know, but you don't know when you're going to get basketball back. You late don't know, January. You don't know what baseball is going to look like next year. I mean, obviously they got through this year, but in a, in a two month season, that's a lot different than a six month season. You, um, you you might get college basketball before you get NBA basketball. So that that'll be an interesting thing to look out for. I think you might see an Aztecs game before you see another Lakers game after Friday. All right, let me jump over here now. This afternoon, this evening, as we're getting ready to head towards the Padres and the Dodgers game two, let me get to Grande Alejandro Padilla, mi hermano numero uno. He's got today's Tory Holistics highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Great friends, go to Kaplan and Crew. Dot com. You click on the Tory Holistics banner and it takes you to the, the landing page. It's going to get you 20% off your next purchase at Tory Holistics with a minimum $75 purchase. Now, I say that every day and yet people still don't know what that means. That means you have to spend at least 75 bucks for you to get 20% off. Okay, people? So when you go to checkout, spend 75 bucks, you put in promo code 1090, bam, 20% off. Guess what today is? Wednesday. Guess what that means? All Whiskey. your weed is off oh. an extra 15%. Weed Wednesday, all flour is off 15, extra 15% today. All right, so I had a friend call me last week. Her name's Suzanne. I'll out her on the air. And Suzanne called me and she said the um, the Suzanne promo Summers? Code. No, no, not her. No. Ooh, yeah, I've been a good Suzanne. Suzanne called me and she said, um, you know, the uh, the promo code's not working. So I call Ruthie over at Tori Holistics because I love Ruthie. And um, I said, Ruthie, the, the promo code doesn't seem to work. And she says, does she have $75 in her cart? 
I said, I don't know. Stand by. Hey, Suzanne, how much you got in your cart? Like 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah, that's why you're not getting the 20% off. It's when you spend 75 <laughs> bucks. And she's like, oh, I'll buy more. I said, there you go. Isn't that an interesting mentality? Like, I don't yeah. want to spend 50 bucks. I actually want to spend 100 to save 20. There you go. That discount is everything. I know. Let me ask you, you guys a question. Go spend 90. Let me ask you guys a question. When was the last time y'all had a box of Wheaties for breakfast? No, never had Wheaties. When no. was the last time you saw Wheaties at the store and you're like, oh, look at that cover athlete? Simone mm. Biles. So I Bruce guess Jenner. I guess Serena Williams wow. has been the cover athlete of Wheaties for the last couple months, weeks, years. I don't really know because I haven't paid attention. But mm -hmm. my highlight of the day goes out to John Browner because look who's on the cover of Wheaties. Oh, Love yeah. That. LeBron Ooh. King James is now on the cover of Wheaties. Uh, I don't I guess it's still a big deal, right? For athletes like, yeah, hey, you're totally. on the cover of the Wheaties box. LeBron, so, make yeah. your own cereal. Make your own cereal at this point, bro. Stop it. Nobody care about that. You bigger than Wheaties, bro. Make your own cereal. Bye. No, yeah, I don't bye. agree. No. I don't agree. I think bye. I think Wheaties. One thing about Wheaties is this. Um, I've never eaten Wheaties, really. I've never been a fan of Wheaties. I think Wheaties are just frosted flakes without the sugar, I think. Yes, they're um, terrible. And they're not good. That's true. They're not good. You got to dress it up. Wheaties little bunches or whatever. You know what, what I'm talking about? Not familiar no. with those. I'll pull them up. I'll pull them up. Y'all know what okay. I'm talking about. So look, here's the thing. I think that Wheaties is an iconic brand. When people say things like, you know, Guess he ate his Wheaties this morning, you know, for breakfast. It, it's it's a part of American vernacular. And very frankly, if you are an iconic athlete and you make it onto the box of Wheaties, I still think it's a big deal. Those are mini wheats, bro. Frosted yeah, mini wheats. Isn't that the same frosted thing? Mini wheats. No, it ain't the same thing, man. Dude, frosted mini wheats aren't little Wheaties. What's oh. wrong with you? That's a, I dude, I haven't had a bowl of cereal in like 10 years, dude. Yeah, frosted not, mini wheats. Not my What's thing. That same no, thing, Wheaties, what? Wheats. No, no, no many Wheats, man. All right, here's very I have different. a sec. I have a second highlight of the day. It's super, super. Well, actually, Browner has a what is you doing? Let's get to that. All right, Brown, are you ready for a what is you doing? We haven't done a yeah. what is you doing in a long time on air. We got one minute, so we got to go. Got to hustle no. it up, Browner. What, what is you doing? What is you doing? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is you doing? Uh. Hey, City of Chicago, I love y'all. Y'all got y'all first openly gay Mary Lori life, but she's doing a great job. She's hilarious. But this is a drop the ball. This is a full on what is you doing? A cannabis amnesty box. Okay, now they're planning on putting these boxes in parts of Chicago where you can anonymously just drop off weed. Look, man, y'all don't get stolen, dude. Y'all don't waste that money on them boxes, okay? Y'all might as well don't put no lock on that box. That weed ain't going to last in there, okay? <laughs> it's going to get smoked before it gets to wherever you're supposed to burn it. Come on now. City of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, what is you doing, baby? Why would you drop off weed? That's the whole point. That's it's a good Samaritan. Dumb. Hey, I found this weed. Let me put it in this drop box. It's supposed to be completely anonymous. Why don't they do that for guns in Chicago? People need guns. Oh. <laughs> Second Amendment, Scott. <laughs> okay. Come on, Scott. Right. Might be. Might be. Keep right, up. We, we got to go. IVN next. Uh, oh, yeah. Independent Voter Network is next. It's all San Diego. It's a lot of sports. It's a lot of politics. Oh. It's a lot of current issues. It's a lot of things that affect San Diegans. Independent Voter Network is happening next, at least on radio. And everybody, let's go watch the Padres. Go Padres. Let's go see what Padres. happens tonight. All right, wrapping things up here. For those of you that are listening on audio podcasts, for those of you that are with us on Facebook and on YouTube, you know we do something different over here. Radio's now over. Oh, this doesn't and, make uh, audio podcasts, by the way. Oh, it doesn't? What? No. Why not? Why? I don't know why. I never, because you've always addressed it as for YouTube. You've never said oh. audio podcast before. Oh, we should just add this to audio podcast. Okay. I think. I think. I mean, I kind of think so. <laughs> like, even at today, the beginning of today's show, we had a manscaped spot. And I think it's the first time we're ever doing like a manscaped spot before the show on YouTube, right? Second time. Oh, it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, listen, I would encourage everybody to support all of our sponsors. Uh, we've got some new ones coming, but all these ad agencies now buy based on CPM. Do you guys know what CPM stands for? Or what it means? It's per Computer. thousand impressions, you know? So it's like, they'll say, Hey, we'll pay you this much money per this many impressions. And I'm acting like I know what they're talking about, but I don't. So I'm trying to figure out where are these impressions coming from? Are they the TV monitors behind all of us? Are they, um, sided, you know, uh, website? 
Are they, um, are they on air mentions? I mean, I'm not even sure. So I'm trying to act like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. Did you ask the person who said that to you? Not yet. I'm trying to get that person on the phone to say, what do you mean? I'll look, I'll, I'll look. <laughs> no, I know What's what it, it means. No, no. I know what it means. I don't know where they're, where they're tracking the impression from is my question. How, how do you use it to generate revenue? Yeah. I get what you're saying. How you can break it down and explain it to someone else to how it works for us. I got you. Yeah. So anyway, listen, um, any final CP thoughts? What? CPM, what CPM. <clears throat> cost per thousand, also called cost per milli, is marketing term used to denote the price of 1,000 advertisement impressions on one web page. If a mm -hmm. website publisher charges $2 CPM, that means an advertiser must pay $2 for every 1,000 impressions of its ad. The M in CPM represents the word mil, M-I-L-L-E. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Which is yeah. Latin for thousands. Yeah. So like we're getting. What is an know, impression? An impression is a metric used to quantify the number of digital views or engagements of a piece of content. Usually an advertisement, digital post or a web page. Impressions are also referred to as an ad view. They're used in online advertising, which often pays on a per impression basis. Counting impressions essentially to how web advertising is accounted and paid for in search engine marketing, as well as measuring the performance of social media campaigns. Impressions are not a measure of whether an advertisement has been clicked on, but how many times it was displayed or had potential eyeballs on it, which leads to some debate as to how accurate the metric is. The Kaplan and crew use YouTube impression is about four or five million right now, by the way. Okay. So, so this is great information for us to know. Um, so by the way, it was an excellent read also. That was really, oh, really good. Fast. Thank you. Fast read, fast read. Thank you. Um, thank if you, you, if you were to, if you were to use the cited website, cited.co and you're flipping through and you see a Tory Holistics ad, or you see a Manscaped ad, whether you click on it or you don't, that is an impression. Okay. We're getting those ads into the app real soon. And the, that's what they are. Those are the impressions. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's really great um, that we've got so many so quickly and that's what, how we work and how we sell now. So here's what I would say to everybody, use this Manscaped thing, you know, um, you go to manscaped.com, buy their lawnmower, get their ball deodorant uh, and, and clean yourself, you animals. Okay. And then use our promo code 1090 to save 20%, which is I really use the good. lawnmower finally. Solid. Really got all, all up in it, huh? Very accurate. Uh, no nicks, no cuts, no nothing. Way to go, Manscaped. Way there to go. go. I know. I'm just looking on their website right now. I see not theirs, ours. I'm looking on cited.co. And, you know, in between debates, there are occasional ads, Manscaped or, or Tory Holistics. And we're working with these companies as, you know, early adopters and they're experimenting. So this is um By the way, if you, cool. go to Cap, if you go to Kaplan and Crew, all of our logos and sponsors are updated so you can see oh, manscape seven mile nice. tory mountain all that right and so so right so uh, once again if you're using our website those are impressions you know all right everybody all right, listen we gotta go go padres let's rock out we're back tomorrow see you then peace